everybody. Nice to see you. Good to be here again. It is uh, just another day where we're here. Everybody's here, right? We're experiencing the same things. My name is Dean. Welcome to the show. Brought to you by our friends at Easy Auto Financial. Uh, helping people get in cars, no cost financing, easyautofinancial.ca. Go check them out today. No obligation either. Also, Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch. Edsfineimports.com. Gitch3 is your promo code. The best underwear on the planet, fellas. Boxer briefs with the pouch in front. And of course, uh, domination, domination.com. Dominate with content. Try them today. DMNTN.com. Well, well, well. Look who we have here today. Lachlan Cross, Max Fawcett, and my friend Mubin Sheikh, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see everybody. Uh, I'm the only one clapping, which is fine. I really don't care anymore. Oh, there's Lock. I was very, uh, but uh, a big show today. We've got James standing by. He interviewed Maxime Bernier for a good hour today, which was a shit show. So we'll talk about that. Yeah, Did he? Coming up. Yeah, yeah. It was fucking that hilarious. That came through, eh? Yeah, that was wow. good. Um, and uh, we're going to chat with him. But uh, his his insurrection pal, Maxime Bernier, that'll be after four o'clock. It's all insurrection between now and then, which is fun. We've also got a guy that quit on the radio yesterday because his mind was full of conspiracy theories. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but introducing the panel, of course, you all know Lachlan from 95.7 Cruise FM. Max Fawcett is from the National Observer. He's going to cover the creeping conservative stuff that's going on with the insurrection, which just looks like greasier and greasier as we go. And of course, uh, Mr. Mubin Shake at Mr. Mubin Shake on Twitter. He needs no introduction. Counterterrorism expert, uh, lover of people and uh, former CSIS agent, former jihadi and current educator on the counterterrorism and extremism. Nice Great to podcast. see you guys. Great podcast. Yeah, spies too. like us. Yep. I enjoy it. Yeah, okay. it's a really good podcast. Good to see you. Why don't we start with um why don't we start with Mubin? And and I and I wrote a bunch of questions down, but this one was easy. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good question. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? It's 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 just a continuation of what we've been seeing for the past two years. Um uh, COVID anxieties are acting up. People are losing control, losing their minds, becoming uh, anti-vaxxer zombies. And uh, here we are dealing with the, the zombie convoy. Yeah, but this has gone on what now? So we're two weeks tomorrow into the trucker convoy, which is not a trucker convoy. Please don't call it that on this program. It is a white supreme. I call it the alt-white jamboree. Uh, I call it the hillbilly like clown parade. I call it anything other because these aren't truckers, right? Um, we're, we're two weeks in now, Mubin. The more I read about the security lapses involved in getting semis full of whatever anybody wanted to the foot of parliament in front of offices around some really sensitive areas that govern this country, the more I'm a little concerned um, can you kind of take me through a fuck how that happened and and why it is still happening from a security perspective, please? I think uh, Ottawa police were uh, did not prepare. Uh, it's not that they did not have advance notice. They certainly did uh, know that this uh, these these people were going to be coming down uh, to stage up. They just didn't take the precautions uh, necessary to to block them from coming in. Now, I think this was largely because the idea was they did not want to be blocking what was seen to be a, a protest. Mm -hmm. People have the right to protest, and yeah. they probably thought that they were all going to show up and go to Parliament Hill, and they didn't realize that they were going to lay siege, basically, to the entire area. So, so a lot of precautions just weren't being taken. Uh, there could have been a number of things done. I mean, even on the roads uh, before they were or as they were making their way to Ottawa, there were a number of things that MTO could have done, the police could have done, never mind with them getting into Ottawa proper. Then what the police realize is that mm, there's like several thousand people here and uh, we don't have that many police. And so that's one of the reasons why you're hearing about the reinforcements that were coming from other police agencies. The RCMP are being mobilized even further now to uh, not just to Ottawa now, but, you know, the other protests that have, uh, especially the one at Ambassador Bridge, yep. which is blocking trade into Canada. And this all happened because of the lack of action in Ottawa. It showed people that this is OK. Uh, the tactic works and the police aren't going to do anything about it. So there were definitely some That's failures. That's a really good point. Yeah, there was definitely some failures on, uh, on the part of authorities in Ottawa. 
Uh, but other places have been kind of, you know, Toronto kind of dealt with it. I actually drove downtown, really didn't see much. Uh, other places saw what happened and realized, yeah, we're not going to let that happen here. So uh, so we'll see what happens now that there's more police presence building and I- incredible pressure on the authorities to now act. Uh, of course, after this two weeks of non-action and letting it grow to where it's grown, uh, don't be surprised to see police action coming soon. Mean, what do you where mean, does that what pressure do you mean come soon? from? Hang on, I want to know. What do you mean yeah, soon? Yeah, yeah. Like, what, and what do you know? Talk to us. You're, dude, you used to be a spy. You probably yeah. know all these guys. What do you got? Tell me. Yeah, well, look, the, the way that the police operate, they, one thing you know I understand about police agencies is they're big organizations. They have to collaborate with other levels of government, other agencies, whatever. So it's, it takes them a little bit longer to move uh, you know, as quickly as they should. Right? So I can understand the delays. Um, and the building up of these police resources uh, tells you that they're not just there to stand around. Uh, I, I know this has been the accusation so far, but I think the police, they really don't want to have a violent confrontation with these people, which I think is going to be inevitable, inevitable at some point, because you're not dealing with, you know, the brightest bulbs uh, in the sockets, right? You can hear from uh, all kinds of media reports uh, what these people are all about, what they believe. Uh, they believe they're really entitled to their uh, to bullying the Canadian public and the Canadian government. To do as they like they can see that even blocking a trade route where hundreds of millions of dollars are flowing across the border several auto plants uh, have had to shut down because of auto part delays many others have restricted their work schedules people are losing jobs i it's talked so- to a guy yesterday in windsor logistics guy lost his job yesterday he said they yep. laid off half their workforce yep and so just on the other question about uh, the you know the pressure the pressure coming from all you know different levels of government and so yeah this, you know, and I'll leave it to the other guests to talk about the role of political parties in, in keeping this convoy going and supporting them and endorsing them. But they're realizing now that this is not something that the vast majority of Canadians appreciate at all. Mm. No, I have a, a, a question just about that pressure. Do you think that that business people like, for instance, Ryan Lindley brought up that the Windsor Bridge oddly is privately owned. You think the guy that owns that bridge is on the phone going, get these assholes off now. Do you, you think that mm-hmm. kind of those kind of phone calls are happening? Mabine? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, okay. and not just not just him, but even the U.S. government, the uh, governor of Michigan uh, came out and said, like, you can't be doing this. So there's increasing pressure that's going to come out. What I don't understand is I mean, these people who are on the bridge, it, you know what? You just go out there and say, listen. If you don't leave, your your license plates are going to be, uh, your driver information is going to be handed over to CBP for inclusion on the exclusion order to the U.S. You're engaging in unlawful activities. The U.S. loves that shit. I mean, uh, if you're if you're doing that sort of stuff, it's like, yep, they're equal opportunity. They'll add everybody on their list. You know? So the fact that we're just standing around and letting them do it with no consequences, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a no. Bizarre. Bizarre. It's yeah, bizarre. two two weeks. Uh, the Ambassador Bridge, so everybody knows, busiest port of entry between Canada and the U.S. carries about four hundred million in goods every day. Uh, to your point, Mubin, State of Michigan uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer offered to help uh, provide equipment to actually tow the vehicles because no one's towing them. There's been a refusal uh, by certain tow truck companies to actually take part in this. Max Fawcett, National Observer at Max Fawcett, on Twitter. The lag and the drag. You put out a really cool uh, tweet today on your Twitter feed. Let me just see if I can grab this. Hopefully this is it. Is this it? It is. Uh, At least conservatives are consistent about one thing is the title. You retweeted David Cochran, who works at the CBC. uh, And I found this fucking gross. On Wednesday night, Ford spoke with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau about the protest, which Ford called occupations. Yet conversations with Ford's team suggest they've been reluctant to engage with the protesters or toss Trudeau a political lifeline. That's the gross part. Here's where it gets really hinky. Ford and his top advisors want to, quote, Leave this to to be Trudeau's problem, a source close to the premier's office told CBC. That echoes language from Candace Bergen, uh, the mega hat wearing town bike. Pardon my language. That is currently the uh, 
the head head honcho for the Conservative Party of Ontario, who's now meeting with all these people. I believe she put out a thing the other day and said, I don't think these guys should go anywhere. I think they should stay. What's going on with the Conservative Party? And 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 take me behind kind of, you know, what you know about the lag and 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 if it is indeed a concerted effort by maybe it's provincial conservatives, federal conservatives. I mean, this is like it's starting to smell like smell way worse than it smelled before. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know the degree to which it's it's organized and concerted. They might just all be having the same terrible idea at the same time uh, because they're all in the same ecosystem and, and bubble as re- uh, you know, with respect to their politics and where they're getting their information from. I mean, this is sort of the, the Justin Trudeau uh, disinformation uh, or not disinformation, but J- Justin Trudeau has this impact on conservatives. He makes them make bad decisions. He makes them, you know, double fault or, or uh, shoot themselves in the foot, whatever analogy you want to use. And, and he's, it's done it here too. Like they, there was a lot of angles they could have taken from the beginning here that, that were safer, that hurt out the people and their concerns and kind of, you know, turned it into a political wedge without exposing themselves as much as they've exposed themselves here. But they, they hate him so much that they, they couldn't resist the opportunity to try to stick the entire, you know, the entire bill, let's call it, uh, on his tab. And they're going to end up paying for it. Uh, you know, I don't know if Doug Ford realizes this or not, but he has an election in four months from now. Mm. And if he's doing things that allow the largest border crossing uh, in North America or uh, between Canada and the United States to close down, you know, it, it, you, all the major auto manufacturers have either laid, you know, uh, told people not to work or they're or they're closed for a couple of days because they just can't get the parts they need to keep their their uh, their assembly lines going. Like that that blows back on him. That's that's his problem. That's not Justin Trudeau's problem because Justin Trudeau doesn't have an election anytime soon. Um, you've already, I think you're already seeing the calculus in their head shift. Uh, Candace Bergen came out today and in the house said, oh no, now it's time for, for the protesters to go home. They need to pack it up and leave. Because I, you know, I think it was Emmett McFarlane uh, on Twitter who tweeted, uh, you know, that they must have gotten the internal polling back and it doesn't look so good anymore. I, I just don't think <laughs> that Canadians are going to be happy with this, this no. obvious abdication of, of their job as elected officials. Maybe you can get away with it when you're the opposition, because you, you, I guess in the contemporary understanding, your your job is to oppose everything. But Doug Ford is the government of Ontario. He, he is not the opposition. I don't know if he knows that or not. And and it's his job to keep Ontario open. It's his job to keep the economy moving. And it's his job to not let people uh, fucking block uh, major points of entry on his border. And he's basically allowing them to do that because he dislikes Justin Trudeau. So, you know, the the only way he doesn't get his ass in a sling with this is because the opposition parties in Ontario are so bad that they can't make hay out of this. You know, I mean, I kind of think that the NDP in in Ontario will, will somehow manage to to screw this one up. And the Ontario liberals are basically (laughs) invisible. Uh, No one knows who they are or where they are, but it's like, uh, like this. Yeah, it's bad, but this is, this is like a tremendous abdication of, of leadership on their part. And, and the fact that, you know, you, you haven't had other conservatives stand up and say this is inappropriate. Uh, really speaks to how far this movement has slipped. I mean, I'll, I'll just say one last thing here about Alberta. You know, we have a, a, a blockade no, no, on our go, own border. You can go on and on about Alberta if you like. I enjoy that. It makes Lachlan crazy. <laughs> so, so we have a we have a the first sympathy blockade was was on the border here in a town called Coots, Alberta, and uh, a lot of farmers, a lot of rural folks, uh, not many truckers. They actually trapped a bunch of truckers on the American side without food and water for three days. Uh, that was nice of them. But uh, they basically demanded that the premier of our province get rid of all uh, public health measures. And he did. He did. So he was planning to lift the COVID-19 health measures. First, he said March, then he said late February. And then when these folks demanded he lift them immediately, he lifted them immediately. So we apparently negotiate with terrorists here in Alberta, as long as they look a certain way. Um, but, but that's what dude, but as long as they're white, yeah, I get that, but I get what you're saying. Western civilization rocks, everybody, Western civilization. I have a, I have a story about that. Actually, if I could just interject quickly, a friend of mine, he's native and I I brought up Indian Al before, right. To you, Dean, he makes art, uh, uh, in Vancouver and he's amazing at it. And, uh, he does Haida art and he said, I'll show you how the government would react to this. Let me go put a teepee up on the border here in between Vancouver and the United States. (laughs) 
but that that's was his text to me and he said it'll be taken down immediately oh yeah and he's yeah. not wrong yeah. unfortunately i i mean it, he's right right this just, yeah it's so crazy but that's that's why this it. see see there's a bunch of reasons why this has continued white privilege is one of the biggest uh, I say that and I get hit with tweets and hate mail and death threats. Like some guy sent me a tweet yesterday or a, 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 a comment the other day and I didn't post it and post like, you're going to get yours. Don't worry. We're coming for you. And I'm like, you're never leaving your fucking parents basement. So <laughs> you know, like the activation of, of, of this group of people, which we'll get to in a second with Mubin is fascinating. I want to stay on the political part of this because this is a conservative issue. Now, now you can't you cannot put the insurrection genie back in the bottle. Right. Like it, it, we're calling this what it is, which is an attempt at insurrection by uh, a group of Canada's dumbest hillbillies that have decided to literally go to Ottawa and penalize the rest of Canada, penalize the economy, penalize hardworking people down in Windsor at the Ambassador Bridge, which is totally locked down uh, because they're mad. They're not very serious people. Is that not just representative of the of the conservative party right now and, and conservative politics? And if it is. Is the intention of the Conservative Party to go full mega? Because getting rid of O'Toole last yeah. week was job one. Polyev came out and he's like, I'm the guy that's going to set you free, job two. Candace Bergen in her MAGA hat, she's the interim leader. She's like, I want to go for, she went for pizza with these guys. She went for fucking pizza. She's the conservative leader of this fucking uh, country. And she went for dinner at a pizza joint with a bunch of people that want to make this country whiter, more Jesus-y, and dumber. So what is the con what is the conservative party look like after this? And what do you know about Doug Ford? What do you know about his involvement or lack thereof? I mean, it's it's it, it really is the 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 culmination of everything that's happened since Stephen Harper left uh, as the leader of the party. I mean, say what you will about Harper, but he kept these elements in check. Um, he he knew when to use them and he knew how to how to keep them on on a leash and they're off off the leash now you know you saw andrew Shear the other day giving a thumbs up to the the blockaders as he went into to the you know on to parliament hill to do allegedly do his job uh, they they're all in on on this movement on the sort of prairie populist uh anti-science um uh politics and and the scary part for me is that it might work uh you know i don't think that they're going to get more than the 30 percent ish of the vote that they've gotten the last two times i think that's just kind of their ceiling with this kind of political movement but at some point people are going to get sick of the liberals it, it always happens they're going to get sick of justin trudeau they're going to get sick of uh, whoever is his replacement you know eventually people just want a different name at the top and and if you know this is still the conservative party at the time that happens we're going to get a really dangerous prime minister and a really dangerous government so you know, as much as as much as I enjoy seeing, you know, conservative politicians defecate on their own feet, um, it, it has negative implications for the rest of us. I, I would much rather see someone like Michael Chong or Lisa Raitt or someone like that who, you know what, I don't agree with them on many things, but they love this country. They have its best interests at heart and they live in the same fact based universe as the rest of us do. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Conservative Party of Canada seems to be moving all of its chips into the MAGA fact-based universe. And I, you know, I don't know how they come back. Um, you know, and as to, as to Doug Ford, I mean, I think he's, he's kind of split between those two universes, you know, his daughter, uh, who is apparently a huge anti-vax organizer is clearly yeah. part of the MAGA, MAGA world. And, and who knows how much of an impact she's having on his decision-making. But, you know, I think, I think Doug is more of a sort of traditional crass conservative politician. He'll do whatever it takes to win. Um, the danger is that if he thinks that whatever it takes to win is going full MAGA, he'll do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, given the, the disarray that it, that is the two other opposition parties in Ontario, he might not get punished for it. You know, we might get four more years of MAGA Doug. Yeah. I Max, don't, I, I don't, doubt, I do not doubt that. And, and, you know, it's fascinating to watch because, you know, he, he has the ability to come in as the white knight here, right, in a little bit. And I'm shocked that he hasn't taken advantage of that political fortune, Mubin. Like, totally shocked. Because it, you can see the waiting game, and you can see what he's trying to accomplish. And I've talked to some people that are involved in his administration, and they said he is legitimately dragging this out because he's looking for an opportunity 
for himself politically. He's looking for an opportunity for the conservatives, and he's deeply personally conflicted, deeply personally conflicted, which bothers me, Mubin, and I'll tell you why, is because we've elected these people not to serve their God, not to serve their family. We've elected these people to serve us, and now we're two weeks into this thing. People are losing their jobs, and billions of dollars uh, of our economy are going down the toilet. So like this, it, it, I, I look at at the people involved in this movie and I go, these are fucking hillbillies. Like if you look at the videos of the individuals of the people that are involved in this thing on the ground, they're all dumber than the next one. But there's a real militant faction behind this. And you know about some of the players that have set up a logistics center in Ottawa, like a lock. These are big fucking names. And these are people with clout. Is that how these guys have been able to get that leg room that they've needed to be able to create so much havoc in this country? Is and, and who are the people that are involved? Can we go through some of those? Yeah, I mean, um, the, you know, the uh, I'll, I'll leave the politics question, of course. Uh, but uh, the reality is, is that, you know, we've been seeing this stuff happening for two years. I remember and I say this often. I remember the last trip that I had taken, well, for a long time, at least a year and a half, was in February 2020. Um, I was training the U.S. military in Florida, and then I came back, and then the lockdowns began. And as soon as the lockdowns began, the anti-vaxxer protests began. And there was zero enforcement. They went on, and nobody did anything about it, and they grew in, they grew in size, and more and more people got sucked into it. And now you start to find uh, these people who are uh, who do give clout. I mean, and, and that's deliberate because yeah. they want to show themselves as uh, we are, we have a right, we have a privilege uh, to be. So you have Tom Quigg in there. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a dude is, on the left. The guy on the right is Mark Friesen. He got, he got some new lungs courtesy of God. Uh, after is, being he, a four is, month he coma. Not, is he not dead? I, I thought no, he was like alive. on death's door. This is pre-pandemic, but this is Tom Quiggin who works with Ben Dichter on the poss- impossibly correct uh, podcast network. It's his media company. Ben is also another one of these cats. He hates Islam, by the way. Ben is uh, one of the guys who's like, we have a creeping problem with Islamists in the country. The, he is great friends with Tom Quiggin and hosts his podcast. But who is Tom Quiggin? Well, Tom Quiggin's a former Canadian Forces intelligence officer. He served in Bosnia. Um, then he got involved with uh, some war crime stuff, like uh, helping the world... Co- um, um, was that the uh, International Criminal Court. So this this came out of Bosnia because of the genocide that happened there against uh, the Muslims there. Uh, and then he's done some contracting stuff for RCMP and the Canadian Forces. In fact, uh, where is it? Is it this one that's right behind my head? Yeah. You can see the Canadian Forces Military Intelligence logo. Mm-hmm. You know who it's signed by at the bottom there? Tom, Tom Quiggin. Quiggin, Tom Quiggin. I, I got to remove that, I think. So, I mean, he uh, so he does. I'm serious. Um, he so he had done some stuff on uh, on terrorism. He was accepted as a court expert in the Momin Kawaja case in 2004. Uh, but then he just went right off the deep end uh, with his again. It's the partisan politics that destroys people's careers, because when you filter everything through uh, the prism of a political party or or whatever, when you have that tribalistic uh, attitude towards factual information, uh, then you start, you know, putting out garbage. And that's exactly what Tom started doing. Uh, he's, you know, he started to go against Trudeau saying, and you can be anti-Trudeau all you want, that's that's fine. But claiming that, you know, the, the, he wanted to sue the government because the government was supporting terrorism. Like, like really ridiculous things like that. Or or seeing like the Islamist boogeyman like everywhere he looks, you know, and so he just he just destroyed his reputation. I mean, nobody in uh, national security really of any merit takes this guy seriously anymore. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And he's Ben Dichter's best guy. Like he's his best, best podcast surprise, guy because surprise. he says, yeah. And, and Ben is just another and he's a anti-Islamist either. Um, who's this guy? Daniel Bulford is his name. Is that is that the guy's name? Yep. Yep, Mr. Bulford, uh, former corporal in the RCMP, part of the protective detail of the prime minister, okay. uh, and and this is and this is what this is what gives these guys clout, right? Because coming from that 
uh, level of proximity to the prime minister and to be able to come out and say, you know, all the, the nonsense that he's talking about. He is also part of uh, Mounties for Freedom, uh, which is a small group of RCMP officers who have completely lost the plot and decided to become anti-vaxxers. It's unfortunate that this mentality is uh, prevalent among too many members of uh, police services, not just in Canada, but in the U.S., as we've seen. Uh, also with uh, military members, current and former, as we've seen in the U.S. It's the same MAGA mentality, right? Uh, and so just because you are a uh, you know private protection specialist for the PM, does that mean that you now have the right to be the prime minister or to be able to give policy on how uh, governments should run uh, health mandates and everything else? This is the problem. Like a lot of these cops and soldiers think they they have this, they're entitled. They have this entitlement and this idea that they are the uh, you know bottom line when it comes to all things related to anything that the government does. Is so, this guy still working, Mabin? No, he he left the the Trudeau's detail, if I'm not mistaken, Mubin, because he wouldn't get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. De yeah. Destroying your career to own the libs. What a fool. <laughs> what a fool. Uh, speaking of fools, we got a bunch of them in there. This is the war room. So we got Paul E. Alexander in the back. Paul E. Alexander is a former Trump guy, uh, failed teacher, failed doctor, and he worked with that guy, Michael Caputo, who legitimately went insane in the Trump administration. Uh, then you got a couple of bears in the back. You got Tamara Lich over here. This guy interested. Chris Barber in the uh, and by the way, Under Armour probably don't sell this stuff to racists anymore. It's a terrible ad. Um, but but I I look at this guy in the middle. His name's Tom Mazzaro. Am I saying that name or Marazzo? Yeah. Am I saying his name right, Mubin? Yeah, Marazzo. Marazzo. Tommy Marazzo. Marazzo. Yeah, um, former uh, Canadian Forces member of uh, engineer uh, engineers. Uh, no deployments, um, but, you know, same thing. He, I mean, he did, he did, I think it was like almost 20 years of service, uh, got out, tried to, you know, uh, uh, teach at the college. The colleges, of course, have vaccination mandates in place. He basically, you know, wrote to them saying, this is crap. I'm not going to follow it. So they said, okay, have a nice day. Goodbye. Uh, and so he was fired from that, uh, from that position, you know, uh, again, like, uh, it's the same it's the same profile if you will these are you know it's all political i mean these are all people that are anti trudeau and they're using their work experiences to lend some credibility to themselves because obviously if you're in the military and you served well then you are a god right you must yeah. be you're entitled to everything you your opinion counts on everything and uh, again we don't i don't buy that stuff i don't care i mean good for you that you served and we respect your service of course uh but you you know you are not uh, you are, you are not the government you know you are not you don't get a seat you, at the table yeah you don't you don't get to you don't get to call the shots when it comes to policies relating to you know every topic under the sun just because you served in the military or you were a cop or you were a doctor or you're whatever the point i'm trying to make here is that don't think that you have this uh, right uh, and this privilege you don't yeah. lock that's a great point uh, uh existing in this country is a privilege not a right go ahead i want to i want to jump back to to max because you actually cleared something up uh, for me the last time we had you on the pod because i said to you somebody needs to explain to me why there isn't more representation or there isn't an attempt at trying to represent what i think might be a large middle in this country um, and you said because well, it's crazy people on the left and the right that give money to politics. So our politics are actually geared towards the more extreme sides of the left and the right. Um, and then I wrote this brilliant blog post that's on DeanBlundell.com <laughs> uh, about how um, our politics is leading to our democracy is leading to extremism. And obviously, I, I it was a it was a wide sweep at it, and and I mean, there's more nuances to it. But I mentioned something yesterday in the podcast, and I'm wondering if if you can verify it because uh, it's just a theory. But when I started to see that GoFundMe climb up and and, and get to 10 million plus, I went, oh shit, there goes the right uh, or any attempt at, at at trying to creep to the middle. Because they're going to look at that and go, hmm, 
I want some of that money. And then somebody brought up a point that Trudeau managed to raise only $2 million in his entire campaign efforts last time. And, um, and they raised 10 million bucks for that GoFundMe. Now, of course the money there's, you know, it's questionable where it's coming from, but do you think Max (laughs) that there was, that these people in these political parties, in the conservative side of things, if, are they looking at that and going, maybe I need to shift my policies a little bit because there's, there's where the money is? So, yeah, there's a uh, that's a really good point. And there's a couple places I want to take this. Uh, number one, I don't think it's a coincidence that conservatives are suddenly super interested in cryptocurrency. Uh, you saw... Uh, Michelle Rempel Garner come out with a, a, I guess, a motion or some sort of bill or I I don't know, saying that we should we should try to attract cryptocurrency entrepreneurship to Alberta and to Canada. And and the premier of Alberta said the same thing. I I think it's probably because they really are interested in the ability to raise and attract money that can't be sourced. Uh, You know, that that would seem to me to be one of the selling features of crypto. Uh, Certainly, you know, the, the GoFundMe money has been been taken away and been refunded to people, uh, you know, conspiracies uh, all over the place about that one. But a lot of that money has been replaced through crypto, uh, different sort of crypto networks, which again, like they're really hard to trace. It's really hard to put that genie back in the bottle. Um, And I think a lot of conservatives, you're right, are looking at the volumes of money that they can raise, uh, you know, in the sort of gray market and find that hard to resist. Uh, you know, it, mm-hmm. when, if, you're, if you're trying to raise money uh, over the table in Canada uh, for a political party, there's a lot of rules, you know, there's small dollar donations, uh, you know, you, there's a limit on how much you can do- donate, you have to be a Canadian citizen. Uh, when you're doing it through crypto or you're doing it through GoFundMe, none of those things apply. So uh, I think that's definitely, you know, a, a siren call to, to some of them. The, the other interesting thing, and this was, um, a tweet thread from a guy named Kyle Olson, uh, who's who's uh, a policy wonk here in Alberta and Calgary. Really interesting, uh, basically arguing that the reason why the Conservative Party has drifted so far to the right is because of the fundraising model they put in place, where they basically have outside contractors raising money for them. And so you you have, you know, the the way that they raise money is through noisy, controversial, outrageous statements, polarizing positions. Like that's what sells on the internet. And so if if the leader of the party does anything that's moderate or, um, you know, pushes towards the middle, immediately the fundraising contractors get in their ear and say, that doesn't work. Stop doing that. Right. <laughs> so so the, they've kind of boxed themselves into a point where the only way they can fund their party is through outrage, anger and conspiracy theories. And, and so, you know, I, I do kind of enjoy doing this, but this all goes back to Harper. This is Harper's fault. Um, he shouldn't have replaced the federal sub. Uh, political party subsidy that Gretchen put in. Uh, and the fact that he did and the way he replaced it has led the conservative party to this sort of ruinous state that it's in right now. Mm. Great point, uh, Locke. Great question and a great explanation about why they're into crypto. Every single one of these guys that they uh, sends me a tweet that's like, that. honk, honk. I got a lot of that this week. I looked at the bios like crypto, Bitcoin. <laughs> Every single person who shit posted me is into crypto. And I think there's a couple things here. It's untraceable and they hate the government so much. And every time they look at their checks, they're like taxes, fuck the government. It's all about crypto. So I think crypto just attracts that anti-person regardless, right? It just is one of those things. But if that is happening and over to you, Mubeam, because I think this is my question and and it's not that I want to see it, even though I really do. Um, Do you think the government is going to this current government is, has the nuts or the ankle to be able to investigate their political opponents um, if indeed they had anything to do with any of this, whether it's Kenny, whether it's Mo, whether it's Bergen, whether it's Derek Sloan, whether it's Max Bernier, and we're going to talk about him in a few minutes, whether it's Hillier. Do you think that we need to seriously look, and will it happen, at holding these guys legally accountable in a court of law? Yeah, on the political side, I don't think that will happen. I mean, it's just too easy to be, you know, to be used uh, by the usual commentators. It'll they'll just turn this into a, a political thing, which it's already been turned into by a, a political party. But whatever. Um, I think what you'll see is uh, other 
consequences that will happen. So uh, at the, you know, the most serious part would be criminal charges and criminal investigations that are underway. I mean, they, they, they are ongoing. I think because the police are overwhelmed, it's, it's going to take some time, but uh, you know, hopefully we will hear of some people actually being caught and charged accordingly. Uh, then you have a lower tier of enforcement, if you will. So at the provincial level, this could be done uh, not just with uh, companies themselves who are seeing their vehicles advertised as part of the convoy. Uh, there's already been some blowback uh, against some of these drivers. Uh, a couple of them have been fired. I think I heard a story of two of them who had been fired. Uh, but that's just the stories that we're hearing about. There's a lot of stor similar stories uh, that we're not hearing about where these people are going to realize that uh, your little horn honking adventure in Ottawa uh, comes with consequences. There's also going to be, uh, you know, uh, scrutiny by insurance companies uh, who are going to be looking into how people were using their vehicles, especially those who are bringing their children in to yeah. live in those vehicles and using those children as human shields effectively. I've already seen disinformation videos out there saying, uh, oh, look, they're taking the fuel and then they want the kids to freeze. So they're already appealing to that. Oh, look, they're harming our children. Right. So you see, they're the bad guys. Uh, of course, speaking of children, children's aid societies have also been going around taking note of uh, who's there, what family members are present, uh, what the level of care that these children have, uh, notwithstanding the uh, F. Trudeau signs that they that they're forced to carry around. Diesel uh, or, fumes. Yeah, diesel fumes, no other worries. kinds of yeah, no just, just, just nastiness, you know, that they're engaging in. So uh, at the government level. Um, I don't I don't think, uh, you know, we're going to have our own. I think the government should definitely hold something, some kind of parliamentary hearing or something on uh, exactly what was going on, who was aiding and abetting this convoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, the unfortunate reality is, is that whoever is responsible in this regard is going to be called out. And uh, it's I just hate the fact that like I'm struggling myself because I, I really don't want to be political. I don't want to get into the politics. But mm -hmm. uh, how do I, I mean, I'm supposed to be, you know, talking about the public safety elements to this. And I look and I see that, well, there's a political party that's aiding and abetting and endorsing and supporting the convoy. So how can I not mention that? By mentioning yeah. that, I'm, am I being political? Like, I'm not trying to be political, but when the party itself is doing it, what, 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 what else can you do? So uh, I'm curious to see what the government eventually ends up doing with this. But this is going to be something that lasts a long time. It will continue to burn a lot of oxygen uh, for the subsequent months to come. Uh, Max, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I know. So there's a, a Liberal MP uh, in Vancouver Center, uh, Talib Nor not Vancouver Center, Vancouver Granville, uh, Talib Nor Muhammad, who just put a bill forward that's that's looking into not just the sources of funding for the convoy, but the sources of funding for all political uh, radicalized movements in Canada and, and where it's coming from and. Yeah, I think that's a good way to kind of try to take the politics out of this. But, you know, I think the problem, and I think Muveen really kind of uh, got into it, is is inevitably it's going to find mostly conservatives uh, if it finds anything. And they are going to work the refs on this. They're going to claim it's political. They're going to claim it's partisan, that it's mm -hmm. a witch hunt. You know, we've seen this in, in the States with Donald Trump, right? Um, any attempt to hold them accountable for the things they've done is is put in partisan terms and, and diluted with that. So. You know, I think I think those other channels are going to be super important because they are, you know, they're not immune to politicization, but they're certainly less prone to it than uh, something that would be as visible, uh, you know, as a parliamentary probe. Yeah, that's a great point, too. I, I mean, if you want to hang something on the conservatives, if indeed their fingers are dirty, just use this picture that I got from Ryan Lindley. This is at the bridge. These are parents uh, of the convoy and they've got all of their children uh, blocking the bridge to the United States, holding hands uh, in a line, using them legitimately as human shields. Um, and, and I'm not making this up. You sure that's not exercise class? Maybe yeah, they're just not getting not a little yoga exercise. for kids, little yeah. little preschool <laughs> calisthenics. No, these are these are Canadians or people who claim to be Canadians, putting their own children at risk as human shields to prevent cars from getting uh, from uh, Canada to the United States with goods because these people won't get vaccinated. That's what we're talking about here, guys, right? I mean, like a call a spade a spade. These are people who've been activated by an ideology 
these are people who are putting their children at risk and committing like visible child abuse, putting them in harm's way uh, while they take pictures of it. While the parents stand out front of the bridge with these beautiful little cherubs uh, holding hands in snowsuits, uh, being committed to um, a life of insanity with um, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually unwell individuals. These are not Canadians. These are pieces of shit. Um, yeah, go ahead, Max. Just, uh, just a, a contradiction jumps out at me when I see that photo, and I'm, maybe I'm getting myself in trouble here, but I wonder about the people who, uh, you know, uh, are, are deeply critical of Omar Khadr, uh, but probably are super supportive of this, right? Like, mm -hmm. the, you know, th this is radicalization of young people who are not able or 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 capable of kind of you know thinking for themselves at this point who knows where they're going to end up uh in 10 or 15 years from now but you know this is what ha this is what happens when you have radicalized movements is is they they do things like this and and you know i don't i hope it doesn't end up the same way but uh you know like the the biggest threat to us in north america right now is not coming from somewhere else it's coming from right in our own backyards and i, I I think we've known that for some time, but but this really, yeah. especially photos like this, really draws a, a heavy underline uh, under that reality. Yeah, Mubin, what do you think of that picture? What do you, yeah. what do you make of it? Uh, you talk about the radicalization perspective, like the work that you've done in radicalized youths and parents. Uh, this is here; it's in Canada. I mean, these yeah. are radicalized extremists, right? What do you think of it? Well, often uh, we see that radicalization begins at home. Um, you know, yeah. this is true for any any extremist group that you can think of. Uh, you know, kids don't. You think the kids know what, exactly what they're doing? They're being directed. They're being used as a spectacle. Uh, it's trying to show that oh, this is a family oriented, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, salt of the earth type people. And you can see the the narratives uh, and the rhetoric that's being put out there that oh, these are the middle class or. Uh, you know, it's it's the elites versus the blue collar workers and, you know, these kinds of narratives to kind of depict that these this small group of people uh, represent all of Canada or all of the middle class or all of the working class. Uh, you know, there is this grandiosity and this exaggeration uh, in terms of their self-importance. And so, you know, scenes like this, uh, I mean, Max makes a good point. It's going to be interesting to see where these where these kids end up. Uh, because if they're being taught this sort of stuff now, um, it's not that much of a stretch to guess what other kinds of unpalatable views the parents probably hold and are probably teaching those kids right now. Yeah, fuck, great point. I, I, I can't. Like, there, there's certain scenes in this whole flu trucks clan, or as I don't know if you guys saw the new hashtag, coup trucks clan. Uh, but there's certain scenes that have legitimately bothered me. That is one of them. The kid um, stuff is, is really hard. To, as a is, father of three boys uh, who spends his life legitimately providing for them as best he can, protecting them from harm, trying to educate them in 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 ways that are important, uh, seeing seeing parents uh, put their children in the middle of the road, holding hands as a human chain uh, to prevent uh, anybody from going across the border uh, is beyond the pale to me and doesn't matter. But I think I know what it culminates in. This video happened today. I wanted to play it How for you. How would somebody support that? Uh, I just got to throw that lunacy, out. There. Lunacy, okay, lunacy, lunacy in Jesus Christ. Max? I would be, I'd be completely okay. If somebody said to me, uh, you know what? I'm going down to the Coots border crossing. Uh, you know what? Fine. They're going to probably remove you. And I'm taking my kids. I don't, I, I can't. Well, because That's you're normal, just... because it, you're self-aware. They they think that they are on the right side of history. They think that they are the you know the freedom riders in, in you know in the United States in, in the civil rights movement. They think that they will be vindicated by history. And so, if you look at it from that perspective, bringing their kids is a teachable moment for them. They're they're showing them you know the importance of civil disobedience and and standing up for your rights and and they can valid they can justify it in a hundred different ways. They don't. They don't feel like they're doing their kids wrong here. I think they feel like they're being great parents. And that's probably the scariest part of all. Yeah. Um, and, and those great parents turn into adults uh, like these two ladies who I don't know if you guys saw this today. 
<laughs> we're being slapped seen, already. I have not seen this. <laughs> you haven't? Uh, Max oh, has no, seen it. God. I know he retweeted it. Mubin retweeted it, too. It's a good one. Is this Karen um, and Sophia? This is Karen and Sophia, these two okay. lovely ladies, uh, down at the Coventry Road uh, Flu Trucks Clan Logistics Center in Ottawa. Um, these two ladies took their oaths as peace officers. Um, in, in and and the video is truly remarkable. I'm a these peace are, officer. Those. <laughs> this is, by the You're way, a five-year jail sentence, uh, according to section the criminal section one thirty in the Canada's Criminal Code. You can go to jail for five years for a peace officer. Yeah, watch this video and and then ask yourself. Should we maybe be getting these people some forced help, like ASAP? Watch this. Okay, he's gonna read it now. Uh, guys, we are going live from Coventry Lane, and uh, we are being ordained as peace officers, and this is legit. Um, the police have been notified that we, are you doing a live of a live? I'm, we're doing a live of a live, people. <laughs> uh, so we're just about to start, so we'll stop talking now, and please take it away, sir. Okay, I'm here to employ each of you as peace officers. Do you understand, under the Criminal Code of Canada, a peace officer is someone employed to preserve and maintain the public peace? Yes. yes. Are you willing to be employed to preserve and maintain the public peace? Yes. yes. Do you believe you are competent and capable of doing so? Yes. yes. On behalf of myself and so many others, do you solemnly swear to preserve and maintain the public peace so help you God yes. yes so help me God Do you see yourself as peace officers yes. yes I hereby employ you as a peace officer of the Canadian common corps of peace officers to preserve and maintain the public peace you are lawfully empowered to employ other members of the public as peace officers and to detain and arrest anyone you see breaching the public peace Yes. Our goal is to work with the police forces and to ensure that they realize that they are not alone and we do not look at them as the enemy, but as other peace officers. Yes. 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 Congratulations. You are peace officers now. Can I Thank, you. Thank you. Can I Amanda, can you please witness can I mine, please? Question, guys? Yep. So, we're, oh, Jiminy Cricket. So, <laughs> I hope I didn't lose that. I, will, okay. I witness you, Amanda. Here. All right. So, Amanda, Rebecca's here, witnessing me. Here. There we go. Resume. Sorry, I hit the wrong button on my phone. So Rebecca Shepard and I are both witnessing each other on our on our various lives. Uh, we have just become peace officers here in Ottawa. We're actually up on Cover Tree Road right now. Mubin. <laughs> I'm a peace officer. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't think I'm ever going out again. <laughs> I have bad news for them. Uh, I actually, my friends ordained me as a judge this morning, so I, I, oh. I, I've already, I've already sentenced them to prison. They don't know that yet. Oh yes, Your Honor, what well, fantastic! Well, I'm ordaining myself as the Prime Minister, um, so that's it. It's all over. Yeah, I, I also appointed myself to the Supreme Court this morning, so we'll all work hand in hand in crushing the rebellion. Yeah. I, that is to me. Think about the word that was used there, ordaining, right? Ordaining. Like a pastor or a priest. Yeah, right? I loved at the beginning when she was like, guys, this is legit. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's not corpse. Uh, <laughs> okay the the ps is silent I buddy i don't understand uh, also I don't really think... appreciated about that i i've never been to a swearing in ceremony of a real peace officer and nonetheless a karen police officer or hockey mom who just decides to become one in a dirty parking lot uh but i am guessing that's not going to hold up in a court of law would be um just throwing it out there <laughs> nah, probably not <laughs> and what exactly are they gonna do They're, well the are goal they... i asked somebody today i'm like what's the whole idea behind this and they said that their goal is to arrest other cops who act poorly and other canadians who get oh, in their yeah. way please try that please try that <laughs> please please and please have someone please. videotaping it yeah, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna realize. Uh, I mean, I I really want them to do it. Please do We're it. We're in so, too. so much trouble. When does this end, uh, Mubin? Next week. You think it's over next week? Yeah. You think some heads will roll? Yeah, they're they're gonna find out. Look, at the end of the day, when you mess with people's money, 
uh, when you mess with the government's money, yeah, that's when they come after you. Mm-hmm. Simple. I've got a tweet that might give us an indication of when it's going to end. Can I read it quickly? Sure, yeah. This is Todd Holloman. I don't know about you, but whenever I see a middle-aged white man who lives in a nice house with a wife and kids driving a $50,000 pickup truck loaded with guns, ammo, and tactical gear using paid vacation days so he can help overthrow the government in the middle of the work week, I think to myself, now there goes a victim of tyranny and oppression. (laughs) So I'm just thinking paid vacation days, maybe running out for some of them. So we could be coming to an end, Mabine. I think you are, you might be yeah. on to something. All right. I, I was wondering if it has to end this weekend. Sorry, Max. Just because like you don't want people coming back this weekend. I'm wondering if something happens like today or early tomorrow morning. But uh, that that would be my my guess. I don't know, like end the occupation, but I think heads might start rolling today or tomorrow. Max, you wanted to say something. Sorry. So there was a was a good piece by uh, Matt Gurney, who is one of the people at the line. Uh, sort of, he went up to Ottawa and did some reporting around who these protesters really are. And he sort of said, you know, the the main camp near Parliament Hill is probably just going to fade away. They'll probably break it up piece by piece, no problem. The one on Coventry Road apparently is a little more worrisome, that it, it it's sort of filled with ex-military, ex-police people. They've sort of set it up like a, there's like a tactical perimeter. Like it, they don't seem like they want to go anywhere anytime soon. And I worry that the only way that's going to get broken up is, is they're going to have to come in there with force. And that's kind of what I think those people have been wanting the whole time. That's what they want. Um, they yes, want that confrontation. Receive. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It, it, a lot of us uh, kind of understand the metrics behind what we don't want the rest of the world to see, right? You don't want to see military being used in its own countrymen. You don't want to see any of that stuff. But I'm, I'm of the opinion that I think we kind of do at this point. Like, I think, I don't know if it, as a warning shot or I like legally following up to every extent of the law. And I know this is going to come across very hoogish. But busting some heads, taking some names and kicking some ass so that we can put the rest of the world on notice that don't fuck with this fabric of this beautiful country. You know, we 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 live here and love this country. And it's the envy of the free world for a reason, because we live for the people next door to us. We live for different people and the color of their skin. We live for opportunity and equality. We live for the uh, idea that every person in this country could be an individual that is allowed to be uh, capable in their own right, allowed to a good night's sleep. They're allowed to uh, live peacefully. They're allowed serenity. They're allowed all these things that Canada really truly is on every world index, right? However, um, what happens in the Americanized bullshit that comes up here? And 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 we see these people acting like alt white American tryhards. Yeah, I like I know this is going to come to an end, but this is going to continue as an ideology for some time. Mubin, it really is, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you know we unfortunately this is you know when they say Canada is the fancy apartment on top of the meth lab downstairs. <laughs> um, yeah, the, all the fumes are are coming up here, right? And these yeah. and these people are, uh, they're already primed, uh, you know, in terms of their thinking and their uh, their ideology. I mean, it's it's a yeah. MAGA mentality, right? It's the yeah. same. It's this this it's, it's a MAGA rally. It's rhetoric. a Trump rally. It's the exact same rhetoric against the press, against the government, against the police. It's the exact same thing. Uh, and so you're right. So it will. It will we can't even, yeah, we can't even fucking be. We can't even do that, right? Like, come up with like, our own. The shit. American insurrection had some bells and whistles. The Canadian insurrection's two weeks. Everybody's sitting around looking at each other, and all these guys are fucking just kind of slowly leaving Ottawa. Like, we can't even do that, right? This is like a. And and here's the thing: is I I know that I'm shitting all over a large portion of Canadians, but these guys don't matter in the public discourse anymore, in my opinion. None of these people matter. If you were involved in this, you support it. If you went anywhere with this, if you aided and abetted any of these people, you hate this fucking country. Is am I allowed to start espousing that perspective, Max? Because I feel that way. Yeah, I mean, this you are. They will. They will try to work the refs and and claim that you're the one who's being divisive and and you know I'm Canadian. But well, I mean, who doesn't? But uh, you know, like I think it's important to look at the numbers. These people are not a majority. They're not even a particularly big minority. Um, they are, you know, a call it ten percent, maybe twenty percent of the of the country that that feels this way, and that's we don't do things on the basis of what a tiny minority uh, thinks or believes. That's just not how democracies work. 
So I, I think, you know, you look at what happened in Alberta with Coots, right? So Jason Kenney bent the knee to a bunch of rural truckers and they kept the blockade up. They, they, they're not interested in policy outcomes. They're interested in total, total victory, right? So the federal government, you know, Justin Trudeau can't, he can't negotiate with these people. He can't compromise with them. He has to take a page out of his dad's playbook. He has to show them his resolve. He has to say, just watch me. And he has to, to drop the hammer. And, and the longer we let this thing drag out, I think the more emboldened they're going to become. Yeah, I agree I, with you. I, the, the old Trudeau thing where he's like, uh, he's like all these bleeding hearts. And they're like, what are you just going to beat the shit out of him? He's like, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Do they scare you? That, didn't he? That Dude, was a so great mean. interview. If, if wasn't you it? really watch it, go on YouTube and. Uh... There's with all these policemen here, and oh, do they do they scare you? Did they did they you know did they threaten you? Just the way that he spoke was yeah. I think we do need a just watch me moment because yeah, I think yeah. most of Canadians are just completely fed up with this, and uh, hundreds of millions of dollars being lost at the border every single day, auto parts being closed down, and all this stuff, no longer cannot go no. on. I no. don't think we have that in our leadership. I, I agree with you, but I have a question, and and I wonder if uh, if this is just purely speculative. But do you think that the support for this movement grows if we do move in with any amount of force at all, Mabi? Yeah, you know what the, the it's going to grow anyway. It's been growing before our very eyes. It's been growing, yeah. you know, since. Uh, you know, Trump really came into power and let these people loose and, and gave them, you know, the the feeling that they're they can go around being, you know, being the way that he is. Uh, so there's nothing you can do. I mean, the fact that you exist or we exist emboldens them and radicalizes them. So, you know what, we might as well just uh, it doesn't matter at this point. We might as well just go in and do what we got to do. Whoop that ass. Operation Wipe That Ass. That's what I'd call it. Um, do you hate these guys a little extra? Uh, oh, I say not hate. I know you don't hate anybody, yeah, Mubin. Uh, being a practicing Muslim, you do hate these guys? Because <laughs> there are a lot of anti-Muslim dudes in this thing. Like Ben Dichter hates yeah. Muslims. Uh, well, Tom Quiggin. I mean, yeah, surprise, surprise. I mean, the convoy organizers are themselves well-known racists. Dichter, yep. Tamara, all of them. All of them are. And so it's no surprise that... These people gotcha. show up because they're they're bigots. They're bigots, and these are people with low intelligence and low intellect. If if you, if you consider that an insult, then yes, it is an insult. Uh, they are of low intellect. You can see that they don't have proper cognitive skills, critical thinking skills. They don't understand logical fallacies. They they're the dredges of society, right? And uh, and it just shows you like you're always going to have a percentage of people in society who who are like that. That's just yeah. the reality of human nature. We can't all be, you know, in the same boat. So uh, it is what it is, right? But I don't hate them. I don't hate anybody per se. I do hate ISIS. Um, but, you know, these people, you know, they basically believe that ISIS equals Islam the same way that ISIS believes ISIS equals Islam. Mm -hmm. So can I show you a picture that made me laugh today? That's kind of both. I call this vanilla ISIS. Oh, no. Yeah, there you go. Vanilla ISIS. Do you see these guys in the back of a pickup truck at the airport oh, today God. with flags? That that not that that's or or should we call it hillbilly jihadi? Which one do you guys like? Vanilla ISIS or hillbilly jihadi? I mean, I'll go with vanilla ISIS just because of the pickup yeah. truck and the flags like that was sort of their their jam. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's the irony of these folks is that, you know, if you scratch any number of them, it doesn't take far to 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 see a lot of islamophobic anti-muslim racism but they have they have they, they have the same belief system as isis you know this like we we are chosen by god we are right uh everything we do is justified by by the virtue of our position like there's a lot of crossover between those two groups and and you know they'd be horrified to hear that but but that's the truth right oh dude i don't need, so correct me if i'm wrong isis wouldn't even do this mubin they would never put their kids in in in, in harm's way. Would oh they? yeah, of course they would. They do it all okay. the time. Yeah, they do it all the time. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Using human. So it's the same like thing. It's the same. These, these these people are the same people with competing ideologies, but the same end run end goal of it doesn't matter how we get there. We just need to be enormous assholes yeah, and ISIS, hurt people around us. ISIS set up camps in war zones. 
for families yeah. and everything, right? Well, I, I mean, the, you know, even the last battle of Baruz, where uh, where we captured all the most of the people that are now the women and children that are now in uh, detainee camps in Syria. Uh, the vast majority of them came out of Baruz, the city that was their yeah. last stand. They basically put all the women and children up top, and they had tunnels dug out inside for themselves where they they hid. Uh, and then, of course, you know, any kind of approach that you take, oh, look, you're killing kids. These people will do the exact same thing. They will put literally put their kids out front and get that on camera. And the, just the scenes of kids being accosted or kids being in distress because their parents are being arrested. All these optics are going to be just, you know, pushed out into social media like like never before. But the idea again, and, and I'm not trying to say when we make the comparison between ISIS and them, obviously these guys are not like, you know, psycho messed up murderers like ISIS, but the underlying issues are the underlying ideology and the thinking, not ideology, but the grounds for their belief is exactly the same. Like Max was saying, they believe that they are God, literally believe that they are God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. They are on the right side of history. They have yeah. this entitlement. And ends justifies means when it comes to this. And especially the grandiosity and, and the belief that their small little group is representative of some larger, you know, population that doesn't exist it, it is just going to be their undoing in the end. They literally think that the entire country yeah. is sitting at home cheering them on. So, yeah. And, and, like and they I, think that we need to be saved. That's when you understand evangelical Christianity a little bit. I was fortunate enough to grow up in that cult. But when you understand it a little bit, um, you understand what's at stake for a lot of these people, too. It's the afterlife, right? Um, you know, life is finite for a smart person, a wise person, understands that the laws of the universe apply to him. You're going to die, become warm food, make the most of your life, enjoy this life, appreciate it, be grateful for it. Those, those cats, these guys every single one of them is driven by real estate in the afterlife that they think exists. And you know, what's at stake for these guys. And I've been saying this for two years. It, what's at stake for these guys is two things. They really believe that God is asking them to reintroduce uh, colonial white supremacy to this country. They also really believe if they don't do it and they get the vaccine, the vaccine actually has something in it. And we've talked about this movie and called the mark of the beast. And that mark of the beast, biblically, according to this group, means that if they get it, when they die, they won't be allowed into heaven because of the QR code in their arms. And they consider that to be a digital tracking thing and, a, and the mark of the beast. So like we you it, it's not just cognitive stupidity. It's not just being delayed, Max. That's the problem for these people. They legitimately are afraid of losing their seat in heaven when they die. Am I, am I on to something here? I think I am. Oh, yeah. I mean, and this is why they're willing to do and go to these lengths, because, you know, these sort of concerns that we have about about life right now and science and democracy it's just like it's an appetizer course for them they they want to get to the main course and and so they'll do whatever it takes to get there uh you know I, it's not a surprise that this comes out of alberta um alberta's evangelical tradition i think is and, and the fusion of evangelical uh christianity with politics is strongest here i think in the country um you know it, it date ties back to Alberta Report and uh, Ted Byfield and, and this whole sort of, you know, the, the movement that spat out Jason Kenney and a whole bunch of other people. And, and this is kind of how they see the world, which is, which is why the, the premiers in the provinces that are sitting on their hands are the conservative ones. Uh, because even, even if they don't buy into this personally, I don't think, I don't think Doug Ford thinks about religion ever. Um, but <laughs> they, they, more they're- He's a cheesecake guy, I think. He he definitely worships the dessert aisle for sure, but they they they're all smart enough to know that their voters uh, are are contained in this in this demographic, and they have to cater to them. And and you know maybe back in the day they they didn't feel as empowered as they do now, but you know with social media and and the ability to kind of connect and reinforce and amplify their 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 messages and their beliefs, they are forced to be reckoned with. Um, you know they run the Conservative Party of Canada right now. You cannot get elected. The leader of the Conservative Party, unless you pay tribute to these people. I mean, we saw it with Andrew Scheer, although he wasn't paying tribute, he, he is one of them. We saw that with Aaron O'Toole. Yeah. Um, it's just, 
you know, so I keep seeing these suggestions that, you know, this, that a moderate choice is going to somehow win the race. And it's like, no, structurally, that's impossible. It's going to be a, it's going to be a race to the crazy house and whoever gets there first wins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so someone like Ron Ambrose or Lisa Raitt, who would be a good leader and would make a good prime minister in all likelihood. I hope in hell. They don't have a hope in hell, you know, yeah. and, and that, that's bad for all of us. Yeah, I yeah it is. And what's bad for the hive is bad for the bee. I say it all the time. Sorry, Locke. We'll let these guys go. Last question. Sorry. I was just going to say, I, I made a crack about um, having another stamp or uh, stamp in my passport to hell. And uh, speaking of crazy, I got a 10 page fax. First off, who still faxes? And it was <laughs> Dear Lachlan. And it was a whole, like, I, I kept it. I still have it at, at work. I stapled it together and put it in my file. Like, it was a breakdown of why I shouldn't be talking about um, the fact that I have a seat on the bus to hell and that there's a way out. And I was just like, holy crap. Yeah. And Jesus is never, his name -o. I would never <laughs> send a fax first off. And I would never spend <laughs> however long it took this this individual to write a 10 page fax to me. It's right. Yeah. It's crazy town. I still, yeah. I'd like to point out max. Thanks for sewering Alberta again. It's not just <laughs> Alberta in Ottawa. Okay. So hold it though. How many of these people, like if you were to demograph this whole thing, how many, if let's say there's a hundred people in Ottawa, 418 cars still, by the way, uh, the go, the give, go send fund is 8.3 million again. So they've, they've raised wow. 20 million fucking bizarre. Um, but, uh, in, in, in those terms, like ring when you're talking, what do you, what do you mean? Ring those phones. Ring you those want phones. these people to have more money? I kind of do too. Right. <laughs> I kind of, I, I kind of don't mind it, but, um, in, in the big scheme of things, I mean, it, it just, this just cannot go on forever. I mean, you know, it's one of the really comforting things that I remember in my head when things are going poorly is like nothing lasts forever. Right. So it's, it's got to end soon. Max Fawcett, national observer. At Max Fawcett on Twitter is where you can find him. Tremendous journalist, uh, fact-based. He's got values. He's got character, and he loves this country. Uh, so please uh, follow Max. And, of course, that nice is my hair friend. Too. Nice Incredible. hair, too. Incredible. <laughs> he just got a fresh cut, too. Did you see yeah. that? He's got a yeah. fresh cut. He looks awesome. Good That flow. is Mr. Good Blue flow. Bean Shake. Uh, he's, he's been keeping Canada safe. And I do want to point this out. These people that hate Muslims, I want to point out, uh, my friend, Mr. Mubin Sheikh here for a second. He was one of the only people, only Canadians brave enough to infiltrate the Toronto 18 and put close to 20 legitimate terrorists in jail. And he put his life at risk to do it for a very long time on behalf of this country. He is a real Canadian. He is a, he is more Canadian than any single individual that is at any single one of these fucking events and never, never forget that. Never forget that the people that really make this country work come from all over this country are different colors. They come from different backgrounds. They've got different perspectives and belief systems. But the one belief system that all Canadians share is that we're in it for each other and we're willing to sacrifice to do it, which is why we're all vaccinated, which is why my friend Mubin Sheikh here put his life at risk for a long time to serve this country to capture fucking real terrorists, real terrorists. So you can stop with your anti muslim This is why I am going to break Ben Dichter. This is why I am going to break half of these people. I broke Randy Hillier the other day, and he's off on Gab now. I am going to make sure that we know who these people are, and I'm going to spend the next couple of years doing everything I can to point out who real Canadians are. We have real Canadians on this panel. Thanks, Mubin, uh, and thanks, Max. Thanks, really everyone. appreciate it, brother. Talk I don't think CSIS is calling it infiltrate the Ottawa occupation, though. Anytime, Mubin. <laughs> yeah, stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could go in as one of their token minorities. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the pictures are sending around of brown and black people going, look, we got one. Yeah, right, right, right. Three. We have three, actually. We got three colors. Yeah, you got it? All right. Hey, we got a Muslim. <laughs> Get over here. Uh, thanks, guys. Oh, wait. We got thanks, a Muslim Max. who supports us. Thanks oh, for having me. Second. We'll talk to you Thanks, soon. Guys. Thanks, Mubin. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, Mubin yeah. Sheikh and uh, Max Fawcett. Max Fawcett, of course, National Observer. What a great guy. What a great couple of guests, too. Yeah, that was strong. That was strong. You know what I love? I love the... I, I do these for me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs>
I do. I do every <laughs> single one of these shows for me to ask the questions I want to know. And then what I do is, is I show everybody. I'm like, okay, come with me as we ask questions of people who are smarter than us. We don't necessarily have to broadcast this live at all. Like that <laughs> really is not, uh, this, it was this never been actually an part of the plan. It was somebody, <laughs> somebody brought it up to Dean. <laughs> could have been an email live. <laughs> You're it doing really this could've. anyway. Let's just broadcast it. <laughs> Uh, let's bring in our friends, uh, Ryan Lindley and James DeFiore. Hey, boys, how are you? Sorry, this could have been an email. <laughs> it would have been fun if Rubin and I could go to the convoy and wear matching jackets and just pretend we're like some sort of skinheads or something. Dude, did you guys been... know that you could become peace officers in a parking lot in Ottawa? I actually, I turned. Is that the what they call up. it now? I microphone. Turn the speakers Lind up. Lind, your microphone sucks. Oh. Yeah, can't hear you very well. You got to connect there, Lindley. Yeah. Oh, he's coming back in. He's coming back, yeah. Yeah, you can deputize yourself. Did you see the video of the chicks that deputized themselves today? No. Did you see this, Ryan? No, but that's okay. I thought no. you were speaking in code. I thought someone now. got a blowjob. Not really. No. No. Okay. These two chicks deputized themselves in the Carpentry Coventry parking lot today. Um, I played it like 20 minutes ago. I got to play it one more time. I mean, this is fucking unbelievable. Okay, he's going to read it now. Uh, guys, we are going live from Coventry Lane. And uh, we are being ordained as peace officers, and this is legit. Um, the police have been notified that we... Are you doing a live of a live? I'm, we're doing a live of a live, people. <laughs> uh, so we're just about to start, so we'll stop talking now. And please take it away, sir. Okay, I'm here to employ each of you as peace officers. Do you understand, under the Criminal Code of Canada, a peace officer is someone employed to preserve and maintain the public peace? Yes. yes. Are you willing to be employed to preserve and maintain the public peace? Yes. Do you believe you are competent and capable of doing so? Yes. On behalf of myself and so many others, do you solemnly swear to preserve and maintain the public peace? So help you God. Yes. yes. So help me God. Do you see yourself as peace officers? Yes. yes. I hereby employ you as a peace officer of the Canadian Common Corps of Peace Officers to preserve and maintain the public peace. You are lawfully empowered to employ other members of the public as peace officers and to detain and arrest anyone you see breaching the public peace. Yes. Our goal is to work with the police forces and to ensure that they realize that they are not alone and we do not look at them as the enemy, but as other peace officers. Yes. 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 Congratulations. You are peace officers now. Can I Thank, you. Thank you. Oh. Can I Amanda, can you please witness can mine, please? Question, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear the guy at the end? Just It wasn't even a question. He's just, yes, for no reason. Yeah. And didn't can they we say, all... like, didn't they say something like, I, I, I can't remember what the exact words were, but... We hope to work with the actual police. <laughs> yeah. Can we all and agree then, on one thing, though? Like, sure. at the end of this, if there's anything that comes out of this entire fucking mess, that we gone. have to issue permits to operate a megaphone. <laughs> like, there should be a it's permit. Kid, kids, you're going to need to write this quick little test. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I think that that's where Canada needs to head. Um, yeah. I want all six minutes. Sorry. Uh, that's where Canada needs to head because like this between that, like the, that's just deleterious bullshit, right? Like it's just these people are fucked. Like they, they, some guy, the guy that did the swearing in is an unemployed police officer. And oh. he thought as a police officer, he could ordain other police officers into being police officers. Like it's some kind of fucking Jesus job, which it ain't. <laughs> um, but like these people legitimately or, or think they have been ordained or 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 given the power to make arrests uh if what's they don't more like concerning the color is, of someone's skin <laughs> what's more concerning <laughs> is that they actually feel like they need to like police themselves that might be one of our first issues <laughs> look at these two babes too huh <laughs> thank you <laughs> look at them oh, i thought like, you meant ryan and i i thought you were talking no about rebecca it's... and karen look That's... at those two hotties you know they could be at home getting those teeth fixed <laughs> they could <laughs> They could be at home tweezing. I can't make any comments about teeth. Yeah. They could be at home um, talking to their children 
Uh, they could be at home uh, making money. They could be at home reinventing themselves. Actually, let's book. not have them talk to their children. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but they're not. They're they're they've decided to become police officers and live uh, in a us. parking lot where Sunnyville. I hear I had a, a friend uh, call me and he's like, "Did you hear about these uh, these crazy like blowjob queens that are involved in this movement?" I'm like, "No," and he's like, "There's like a group." <laughs> And I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is true. That's just There's a convoy like a, hello. That's just a convoy hello. That's all that. Convoy hello. There's like a lot of the women that are in this convoy um, are Randy, and there is crew of them. I don't know if this is true. That are giving some. You had to use that Im- word. Important people, Randy. Yeah, important people involved in the uh, stress relieving beegers. Start the truck. I gotta say. That is the greatest <laughs> protest side activity I've ever heard of. I, I, right? I think that we we have these people all wrong. They're giving away. Listen, you look a little tense, Randy. How about a blowjob like that? That's happening. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I could be hey, wrong. Well, color that's me, per- Randy. The- I'm going <laughs> to Ottawa. <laughs> that sounds like For socialist talk to me. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Those socialist blowjobs are the worst. <laughs> they never try because they just have yeah. to do it. Yeah. Stupid Very. patriarchal symbol. <laughs> you, know, all that shit. Uh, you guys are parents. Did you see the uh, screenshot of this? Yeah. yeah, I'm the one that sent it to you. And You're right, I got you did. just as mad when I saw it. And now yeah. apparently Pat King is talking uh, on his Facebook Live an hour ago and rallying parents to slow roll their children's schools with signs. Mm. That's, so that I like was listening idea. to you the first hour, and um, it isn't in the same universe as ISIS. It has a couple of common things, but I i mean, I saw, we saw footage of ISIS literally put 600 people in ditches and just walk around and spray with machine guns. That's for an next. Hour and a half, so <laughs> That's next. Really? But, but not, not, not <laughs> ISIS in terms of like like the legitimate action. I mean, ISIS in terms of tactic, like using your kids as human shields. Very terroristy. Very the only thing missing is like the artillery shredding <clears throat> the children apart. But sure, this is I true. Guess they... <laughs> um, did Maxime Bernier uh, like this? Do you think you interviewed him today for an hour, which lit the internet on fire? Everybody, I got I, I didn't check my tweets, but uh, you interviewed Maxime Bernier on Black Bulb today, and we we carried it live. Uh, Ryan was managing our socials at the time, and uh, that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, so our loyal fan base and listeners and watchers are watching Hated and listening it. right now. Please don't be mad. And um, thank you for listening to my explanation that James was there to take him to task and put his feet to the fire. But they, yeah. I literally got bombarded with messages of people saying, what the fuck is that guy doing on here? Yeah. Ugh. And it used to be okay. You know, it was, it was like, oh, wow, this will be interesting. But we now interviewed because him of- and people loved it. Yeah, but because yeah. of what's going on now, he's not a very well liked person. I don't well think people trust okay. I'm going to say this. I, I'm just going to say one thing, and then Lachlan, whatever you're going to say, just fucking say it. But because this is this is exactly oh, what I, I think. This is exactly what I think. If you think having anyone on any podcast is inappropriate, go fuck yourself. Because Pulitzer Prizes you're are right. won. Yeah, no, you're. I interviewing agree. Interviewing Osama bin Laden, interviewing fucking serial killers. It's Big Max time. Bernier. He looks like a fucking out of work game show host. It's fine. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. He actually like, and I like does. Him. Now that you say that, he totally does, and I like him. I really like no, him. I, I, I'm not kidding. Listen, I don't wow. think he's a white supremacist. I think he knows that he. That that a bunch of his support, maybe twenty percent, probably comes from avowed no. racists, and I think he's using them for votes. And I think he's probably you, a little unethical because of that. But I think he's a nice guy. He's kind of charming. I don't hate him. You know what I mean? You think? Like, and even if so I politician. did, I'd have him on. You know? Like, yeah. You think? Sorry. You think that? Okay, if we boil his base down, you think only twenty percent of his base is racist? I don't know, man. You know, like you just interviewed him. I, 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 yeah. You don't want to fucking recap that whole thing. I thought you nailed it, and um, it was good. It, it was, was really great, good. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a great interview. And I agree with you, dude. And, and you know that you, you, you called me yesterday and you're like, I can get Bernie tomorrow. What do you think? I'm like, fucking go for it. People want to know what the guy yeah. thinks. People want to know what he's thinking. He's like balls deep in this. He's got his fingerprints all over this thing. Uh, he is a major mentor to that, um, you know, freedom of obligation crowd. And that is a huge fucking topic of discussion. So I thought you did a great job. I want to play one of the clips and I want to get into it, too. This is you with Max talking about not taking vaccines. Watch this. Don't you find that this situation is so difficult and so complex that it would be impossible to say, yeah, I've been right the whole time? No, the, the situation was the same. You know, uh, I must admit that in the beginning of that pandemic, the first maybe two months, I was not sure. But after that, we had uh, cases coming from other countries and data coming from other countries and saying that, you know, the most vulnerable are older people with uh, comorbidities. And actually, that was a fact that what happened in Quebec and in Canada, 80 percent of the deaths were people older with comorbidities. That's why early in the beginning, I decided not to take the two shots because, you know, I'm 59 years old. I'm in shape. I'm running every day. I don't have any comorbidities. And I, I, I looked at the data at that time and my chances of surviving if I had COVID was 95, 90, 99, sorry, 0.95%. So I said, you know, I don't need that vaccine. And I asked Same him, thing. I, I, follow, I, I followed up by saying, like, how do you reconcile saying that you think the vaccine is safe? Because he said that. And then, um, and say, I'm healthy, I don't have to take it, but... You must know that I can't remember how I worded it, but it was something like you must know that you're spreading it to people who do get hurt. And doesn't that give you any pause? Potentially. And he's like, no. Potentially, could you? And then I said, what about leprosy? And he was still like, no. <laughs> yeah. He said, no, I was dying. I'm like, how, what do you mean? No. Yeah. You, know, you know, what's really, you know, what's really funny. I, I, I ha I'm known to have a temper on my show. I, there's no one's gonna make me mad for some reason. Maybe it's because I have full control and I'm kind of a fucking narcissist. Your volume like went up a couple yeah, of times I think though. That it was might uh, have good. something to do with it. Yeah, yeah. The fence I, you put I, around yourself. Yeah, I do need to say this because uh, you called me out, James, and 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 I, I I'll, I'll tell you this. I think what you're doing is exactly what we need. We need more of it. Now, I don't Lachlan, know whether it's, it's or not. Part of your, it's partly your idea, or at least we had the same idea. When you said, it stands out very clearly. And I, I think about it a lot, actually, when I'm booking guests. I'm like, does this fit the Lachlan Blackball brand <laughs> definition? Which is yeah. like people who are controversial and people who have been canceled. Sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. No, I, I, and I think you need to continue to do that. And I think we need to, you know, and I, I listen, I, I Dean is kind of, Drawn a, the <laughs> drawn a line in the sand drawn a line in the sand and and there's a lot of people that aren't going to cross over anymore and, and i don't blame them for that that that's completely your choice we're it's going to be harder and harder for us to get controversial guests uh based on the growth that we've had in the last six months to a year um because i i don't think they stand a chance in in this panel um, but one-on-one -on -one with somebody like James that can carry on a, a, an intelligent conversation with just yeah. about anybody, I think it's a strong move to have James and Blackball on the podcast network. And I don't think people should be angry when James steps up and says, I'll interview that dick because yeah. somebody needs to, that yeah, voice agree. needs to be heard. And mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't need to be heard because I feel like it's unrepresented. It needs to be heard because that's the fucking country we live in. You are allowed to have an alternative opinion. You are allowed to um, go to whatever church you want to. You're allowed to be a citizen of this country and be different from everybody else. That is what fucking Canada is about. And 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 I yeah, and we're you know, in our you know, own little fucking bubbles too much now. We're in our own little echo chambers. Yeah, we're we're like preventatively All protective about the things that other we don't want other people to hear, right? And the reason why I love James is that the kind of courage it takes to interview one of the most vilified libertarian, yeah. lying assholes. This is my opinion. Uh, in politics, maybe in the history of Canadian politics, there aren't a lot of people that would be able to sit in front of him and Hillier that would be able to sit in front of that thing and not fucking go, hey, dude, why are you so fucked in the head? 
and and to have James be able to handle that, have the relationship to be able to manage that that interview to get out of him like so you're cool with people having leprosy? Yeah, no big deal. I don't care if I give leprosy to people. Like that was the whole goal. It's it, and James says it from time to time, and we're all different. But what James says and I identify with it, sunlight, great fucking disinfectant, right? Like that's that interview was all about. Let's ask him what he's all about today. And I love that part of the interview. But if you're if you're angry and you're going to say to us, hey, listen, James interviewed someone we don't like. And that means we're not listening to you. You missed the idea. You missed the whole yeah. fucking script, yeah. right? It's a yeah, marketplace really. of yeah. ideas. Yeah, yeah. So good work, James. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, it was it was good. It was just it was it was trying to trying to convey that in 140 characters to our fan base. The other <laughs> over problem. And over. Just the just other type problem fuck you. In. Grow up. Uh, no, problem. James. There's a reason why we have retweets and James why i'm not doing the we... socials i'm pretty sure <laughs> that's yeah, right we... yeah, yeah, yeah. There, you know what and there's there's a reason why um we there's a reason another reason why we need to actually sit down and talk to people like that because there is some common ground i hate to say it but if anybody goes and listens to that max bernier interview that james just did and and i'd encourage everybody listening right now to go give it a try i'm telling you right now there's going to be a couple of things that he says you might agree with, or and you don't even have to agree with him. There might be a couple of things that he says that gives you a perspective of why he is in the lane he's in, and understanding where people are at right now. Head I trauma? think is important. Well, TBI. Well, uh, <laughs> hey guys, leave him alone. He's got a plinko in the bedroom. It's one of those plinko games. So. Can I play this other video? That that uh, this is another clip from James's show uh, talking about you know communicating underlying messages. It's great. If you, I'm just, I'm just wondering if you agree with the underlying message. That's all. That we, it is a, it is a requ- a steadfast requirement that a Judeo-Christian underpinning uh, prop up become the foundation of our society. Or do you think that we can have a functioning society without Jesus? I believe that we can without. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So you touched on the Jesus portion of the underlying message of this whole thing. We talked to Mac Fawcett. Uh, and Mubin Sheikh about it. Is he is he hyper religious as well? No, no. Nobody uh, he surrounds uh, Max, himself with crystal fascists. That's all. Yes. Are you talking about Max? Max? Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, I asked him last time. I, I've interviewed him four times now. Um, that would include the one. Uh, I don't count the uh, the one where his audio broke on on your on on this show. But the other time on this show, and then this time, no, maybe it's even five times. It doesn't matter. But he. I ask him about religion almost every time I interview him because um, what I did with this interview is that I thought to myself, who who are the controversial uh, subsection of support that he receives? And I came up with religious people and racists and anti-vaxxers. I think there was one other one. And those, the questions were designed to see if he would say things that would probably run counter to one or more of those demographics. So like, is Jesus a necessity in the underpinnings of society? No. Okay. Good luck fielding that blowback. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I that, that's not the intent, but like, I want him, I want people when they come on the show, you want to, to trap them. I, well, I don't want them to give me boilerplate. You, you, you know what? I, and, and this isn't anything to do with me and like, because I, I still think I talk too much like when I'm asking questions and shit, like I have some improving to do. But the, the one point we'll that I'll give my you. the one point that I give myself for 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 interviewing people is that I'm not coming at it from a are you a racist or you're the greatest. Like I'm not doing either of those things. That's the only interviews we ever see nowadays, no matter who mm. it is. If you're if you're yeah. on the left and you go on C B C they're sucking your Dick. Your dick, <laughs> and if you're and balls, and if you're right wing, and you go on Ezra, he's sucking your dick. But then when it's vice versa, all of a sudden tough journalism comes out. But it's always about the dumbest shit. It's not about anything worthwhile, you know. Right. And what what interviews do we talk about? Right? Do do we talk the about the ones crazy where, one where someone's right? like, yeah. "I hate black people." I'm like, I'm playing that, well, and I'm gonna well, fucking hang it on him. Like yeah, that's well, that's the society. Or Ron McLean in. interviewing um, uh, the Count Twitchy. What's his not the 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 commissioner right. Batman, right? Yeah, Batman, and they clearly hate each other. Yeah. Right? 
they, I mean, those are the interviews we talk about for years. Yeah. We talk about, we remember, I remember that interview where they were yeah. just, they were on the verge of yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. That I mean, yeah, yeah. No, James, it would be it really up. easy. It would be really easy to have Maxime Bernier on and spend the last five minutes berating him. And it would get a lot of clicks probably, but who, I don't want to do that. I don't think that I'm, I'm just wondering at what point does his this fuel tank play, run man. out of gas? That's my question. When do we stop giving this guy oxygen? Because it's just oh, over could... and over and over again. Dude, dude, the same thing. Like, like the, 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 the cognitive his... dissonance in this country in terms of uh, how much, how especially the West fucking hates the East, like hates the East and the West has found their guy in the East. Like it's just, a big deal. I just I don't understand how can we how can we give this guy like the, the the attention that he garners when everything that he stands for is against the charter of rights that that he, that they espouse every fucking time they open their mouth or the constitution. It's again everything that he wants is not laid out in that either of those documents. So he can't get what he wants. So why are we even entertaining him as a leader, possible leader? I are we going to make funny. amendments across the fucking board? Yeah, I find to, it funny. Like the dude just, you know, the, the, like he sewered himself in the interview with, with James where he was like, yeah, I don't mind giving people leprosy. Like, again, yeah. I go back to the whole thing. Sunlight <laughs> is so great funny. disinfectant, right? Like it really, really is. When we look at the people that, that we interview um, and I interview a lot of people that agree with me, right? Um, I love interviewing people who don't agree with me, but because of the tact that I use in sewering this group on a daily, sometimes hourly basis, not a lot of them want to come on the show. So when you have a guy like James that kind of is able to go between both of those worlds, uh, it's super important. And, and you want to be able to bring people that content, too, for a variety of reasons. It's I just a gift, want to, I, James. It's a gift. Yeah. It is. No, like the conversation is great. Don't get me wrong, but I just want to know why we, we've got so many problems in this country as it is already. And somebody like that, even if you thought for some reason, for some reason, he ends up getting a seat. Nothing he wants to do can happen here. Right. It can't happen here. Can he, you, everything will get knocked I, I down his, in part. I know his platform. I know his platform really well. So mm -hmm. can, which which part of his platform are you are you speaking of? Because if you read the platform, the ultra libertarian um, he, part of his of his idealism is what I'm okay, talking so about. If you, but if you read the platform, like he, he wants to take immigration down from its current numbers, which I think is like three hundred fifty thousand. It was two hundred and twenty thousand or something over under Harper. He wants to put it at one fifty. The thing that makes that controversial is that everyone goes because he's motivated by racism and I don't know if he is or not, but there's a good economic. And when I say good, I mean that you could make an economic argument for it as well. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's one of those it becomes one of those things where it's like you have to it's tricky because you have to prove that a person is motivated by their hatred of people with other skin color and not motivated by how much of a stickler they are with the economy. And so I don't ever make the assumption. I don't think you should impugn the motivation of someone who doesn't implicitly state that this is what they believe in, because I don't think it's fair. Um, I, I could totally understand why you would suspect that, but I'm agnostic. And so I ask him questions that I think are pertinent, but the other parts of his platform all kind of fit that same description where it's like, he could be motivated by hatred of something, but there's also this argument and that argument. So who knows? Well, that's so pretty convenient like, to tailor them that way. I think. That's all. Well, give me, but, but if you gave me an example of the thing, I would gladly be oh, like, I don't have oh, I didn't know about that. Well, I, let me let me just in interrupt here, and I'm going to introduce a video of Maxime Bernier, who is not religious, apparently, at, uh, I guess you could call it a tent revival. Uh, you is guys know who Henry Hildebrand is? You know Henry? Uh, Church of God, Aylmer, yeah. uh, super Orthodox Christian, forces women in his church into subservient roles. Uh, they have to sit in the back. The men get to sit in the front, virulently anti-vax. He is the reason for the Christian season. And if, and, and if I could get five minutes alone with this guy in the room, he wouldn't come out. Um, <laughs> that's how much I dislike him. But uh, this is Henry Hildebrand in Ottawa yesterday with your boy, Randy Hillier. Your boy, Randy Hillier, who's in it for Jesus or, Ma or not. And Church. Maxime Bernier, who is only really in it for the notoriety and the votes rallying around a speech by this crazy fucker, Henry Hildebrandt, who legitimately is a waste of skin. Like he is a Jesus filled really waste is. of skin. I want to show you this. This is from Back last to why night. we can't get guests on the, 
Dean Blundell Plus, Podcast Network that represent other point of view. This is not another point Roll. of view. The, no. the pastor, you before you play it, before you play it, the pastor's nickname could legitimately be Henry Hill. Henry Hill. Go on. Yeah, that's oh, right. That's um, but I want you to watch this. Karima took this. This is her video. I give her full credit. At Karima Rules on Twitter. Watch this. And then tell me what this is all about. By God's grace, we're going to show the population what it means to get back on the foundation. When you pull the foundation out, the house will not stand. By God's grace, I will stand and speak for God as long as I can. God bless you. Amen. See that Randy, Randy is so drunk. Fuckered. He's, he's so, so fuckered. <laughs> Randy's so dicked. He doesn't even know how to use a microphone after that. He's wasted before he got into the meeting. Um, th- th- nice? that, what he's talking about when he says the foundation, just to give you guys a quick recap from the Old Testament and the Christian church and the evangelicals that are starting this whole fucking mess. Uh, they're talking about Western civilization. They're talking about Jesus and having prayer in schools and all that other shit that, that nobody wants because it's fucking bunk. So uh, that is the religious taint <laughs> of of this movement in a nutshell and those are the fucking cocksuckers that are driving it there you go yeah they're talking yeah. point that, uh, and i've been and i've been hearing it since reagan like i and i was only i was like nine or ten when reagan was in office so i'm talking like looking at clips because they all use the same talking point which is like the principle of judeo-christian philosophy works as the infrastructure and the underpinnings of western civilization without it we would be doomed and it's like really <laughs> you use religion <laughs> to keep people in bo- in line back in the day and then we slowly got out of our chains of serfdom and now you're saying we need to go back to what created serfdom you yeah, fucking yeah. idiot like yeah i don't know that's that, I asked him about that, so I, and, and yeah, I know he's about it, as you saw. It was or, or it was sort of, good. Yeah, it, I think and, you can and, be a good person without having a religion in your life. And, and I think I think it's impossible Isn't to be a good person if you do have religion in your life. To be honest with you, well, there's that, a quote. And, and there's, there's a, a quote, and it's uh, there's uh, there's nothing a religious person can do that's righteous that an atheist can't do, but there's a whole whack load of crazy shit that you need religion to motivate you to do it. You know, there isn't any yeah. atheist equivalent. It's like, I don't believe in God. I'm going to kill people like that doesn't it doesn't make any sense. You know, when you do uh, that. unless you're these guys that like to use their kids as human shields. Well, they believe in God in the name, in so, the name of Jesus doing it in the I, name I've of been, Jesus. I've been fired up about like the whole thing for the last couple of days. Obviously, we've been going back and forth and going nuts on Twitter. And, and I sort of got it was that picture that that was my rock bottom today. Yeah. I, that was it. I was like, "Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not having fun with this anymore. This isn't fun. Somebody's got to step in and do fucking do something." About if this if now. it makes you feel any better, I bet you at it least will. four of those kids were like, "Hurry up, Uncle Terry, and take the fucking picture." <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Where's my cookie? Yeah. <laughs> do we get cookies hey, now? Dad, you, you you promised me a cookie and a bump of your what mess if I came. Oatmeal. I wanted fucking Oreo. You cheap pricks. <laughs> Son of. Why a is bitch. my bong water dirty, Dad? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyway, boys. Flashback for James. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to this morning. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, like I say, I, I get what you're saying, uh, James. I, uh, but I'm just tired of seeing him, and I'm tired of hearing from him, and I'm tired of hearing anything yeah. that's coming out of his mouth. To t- but I understand where your point of view, because he's still relevant, no matter what I think. Um, to a I know it's faction. weird how that works, isn't it? How when I, I don't understand why the world does. Be. The world, yeah. Why the world doesn't revolve around um, my opinions? It's fucking bunk. So you know yeah. how we saw the kids um, and the parent. Like we've watched Crazy Manifest itself. We saw Locking. the unchipped kids. Yeah, yeah. unchipped. The pure Those bloods. Are the unchipped ones. How will they order pure a bloods. pizza yes. if they're unchipped? That's, that is that right there, folks. Is a line of unchipped kids, That's untraceable, right. only by God. <laughs> They're well, traced by God. this this stuff is making its way into uh, radio. And I, if you know anything about the business of radio, it's incredibly insular. It is, uh, you know, people it's a are asked big operation. Yeah, not really. People are asked to go on, uh, produce a show, do a show on behalf of a company, then get off the air and make room for the next person. So that radio station can acquire listeners. It's the whole game. Cum. 
TSL. I don't want to get into all the cool names that radio people use to try and make you look cool. T, what's your TSL? Time spent listening. It's the cheesiest shit ever. Anyway, it's incumbent upon a radio host who is given a time slot on a radio station that belongs to a, a company that he is does not own or involved in to deliver uh, that messaging, which is why I fucking hate the entire industry, right? In Vancouver yesterday, there's a dude named Kid Carson. Now, Kid Carson uh, is a near 50-year-old man, okay, <laughs> working at a hip-hop dance station doing a morning show, which made me fucking laugh. I always, I always laugh at that. <laughs> kid, he was His called Kid dudes. Carson in the seventh grade. You know I, it. I, he was Kid Carson. He's been Kid Carson for so long. <laughs> was he in Toronto at any point? Yeah, he, he was. Yeah. Around, bad, right? yeah. That's got to yeah, be a Scarborough. He was at Z103, guy. I think, here in Toronto. Yeah, and, and he's, he's been always at, on a Z. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I did a little research into this Kid Carson dude yesterday after he legitimately exploded his whole fucking life. Um, and he's been fired from every pop radio station in the market of Vancouver. Uh, he was in Ontario for a bit, but, but he's full on conspiracy theory. He is full on Mr. Crypto. He is full on, um, uh, vaccines are, are chipped micro plants to track children. Uh, like he's, he bought into the whole fucking mess. I think he went down the Jesus path this year too. I'm I'm speculating. Might like, have. I didn't I judge did. him until just now. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, I'm like, okay, whatever. So, <laughs> so like, like a Chipping lot of people, <clears throat> like okay. a lot of people in, um, in this world, we're full up to here, right? Like we've, you know, lots of stuff going on, things, people. Like we're trying to, like Ryan's, like yeah, I was broken today, all that stuff. So, what you're going to hear God is a radio guy that has doesn't have the ability to negotiate life, uh, crack a microphone. And legitimately throw his entire life away for six and a half minutes. Like throw his entire career. Are you playing the whole bit? Well, we got four forty here. I'm oh, gonna play all four smoke? minutes and forty seconds. Can I go can I go and for the, a cigarette? Yeah, <laughs> go totally. For a you can go for a I'm gonna listen. Like. I'm gonna still but this listen. is yeah. this is one of one of the funniest, saddest, that's it weirdest. It's not funny. It's sad. It, fucking manic. This yeah. Radio I, I breaks. I had a hard time listening to this. It's it's the feet in the hot and the cold wait, wait, water wait. at the same time when you hear this. It's <laughs> fucked up. Let me Is it worse than when Jim cried? And I like him, so I don't want to say his last name. But it was was it worse than that? Dude? Yeah, way worse. Really? Significantly worse. Is it worse. worse than most of my breaks? Wow. Can I play the clip and then you can decide? <laughs> Guys, Talk about it after. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> or do you want to ask another several questions before we play the fucking clip, James? What are you eating tonight for dinner? Sorry, Dad. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is Kid Carson literally lighting his fucking life on fire for about four and a half minutes <laughs> on the radio in Vancouver. Oh, by the way, he got fired immediately after this. Here you go. Fed up, fed up, fed up, fed up, fed up, bomb, fed up. The Kid Carson Show on Z ninety five three. Good morning, radio buddies. Uh, we've had some fun this morning, but I got to be honest, my heart is is heavy, and it's been heavy for a very long time. Um, you know, I host a radio show. I'm expected to talk about all sorts of things, but it seems I have to avoid talking about all the things that really matter, and it's especially hard with the thing that's happening in Ottawa. It's like, uh, am I supposed to talk about it? Am I allowed to talk about it? Can I say something without getting in trouble? And and so I end up just coming in here. I walk into the studio, put on my headphones, and I think, okay, here I am. What silly, stupid thing that doesn't really matter can I talk about today? <laughs> uh, it just, and it, it weighs heavy on me, not to share my honest feelings and commentary about what's happening around us and and, you know, I used to kind of mention little things here and there, political things about what's happening in the pandemic. And I would do that. It ended up just wearing down the relationship I had with my bosses, to be honest. And, you know, one morning, like six months ago, I shared my my uh, opposition to the passports. And it was never really the same again after that. Things really changed. I, I paid a very heavy uh, price for saying that. And... I uh, begged for forgiveness to the people that uh, that needed me to say that. I promised I wouldn't say anything else controversial or post anything about it on Instagram. And, and you know, my, my opposition to mandates and passports, those things would just stay locked in my head. And, you know, because I wanted to protect myself, protect my co-host, protect our families from unemployment. But honestly, I just feel like a piece of me died. I, I feel like I became like a 
a sellout or something. I don't know what the right word is, but uh, I just feel so many things I want to say. And, uh, you know, but there's there's a price to pay when you do. If you're not going along with what everyone else is saying, you know, this radio show sucks without another point of view. The whole media landscape sucks without another point of view. It's just like the last six months have felt like the, the, the crazy person in media, you know, <laughs> No one is, I mean, is no one else going to speak up and say that this is kind of crazy? You know, I just feel like I'm trying to stay on my best behavior so that I can be liked again, so that I can keep my job. In, instead of doing what we are all supposed to be doing, which is having passionate discussions about the insanity that's happening around us. It's insane. It's like we've been set up to bicker with each other over issues that, although are powerful and valid, they're, they're meant to distract us from going down that rabbit hole that's, that'll wake us up to the manipulation that's taking place. You know, like, if you think the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa is a racist movement, you have been tricked. You've been fooled. You know, what we need to realize is that it takes real eyes to recognize real lies. I'll say that again. We need to realize it takes real eyes to recognize real lies. This isn't Trump. about race or health or Nazi flags or masks. It's about trying to keep our children off a digital ID that will control every aspect of their lives that can be switched off at any time but that's the crazy me coming out so yes, <laughs> I, won't, uh, I won't go there you know my god if you only knew you'd be so mad but you know I'll be the one that gets mocked for doing my own research <laughs> yep you will uh, and this, this last like week or two I mean the, the final thing I want to say is why, why is the news not telling us the truth we see truckers setting up bouncy castles for kids Feeding the homeless, fuck. dancing, being so damn Canadian, but the news is calling it violent. I, I don't understand it, you know? I mean, the media took $600 million from the Liberals pre-election. I mean, even Daily Hive took half a million, I think. You know, so maybe that has something to do with it. And there's nothing wrong with taking the money, but let, let's just be honest about how the game is played. You know, it's not fair to you. It's not fair to all of us that, like, like how are we supposed to know what's happening in the world for real if the news isn't telling us? You know, I saw this uh, Sikh man being interviewed in Ottawa and, and he was feeding the homeless, he was feeding the truckers and just a very lovely man. And then the news interviews him and, uh, and you know, people were capturing this whole thing on their phones as they just stood around. So they took this five second clip of this man saying, I'm terrified. And they put that on the news. But I think what he, he was really saying something like, you know. I can't. <sighs> yeah, you know what's weird about that is that that actually Everything? didn't sound. Well, I had I hadn't heard it yet. It, it, honestly, that doesn't sound like like completely bad shit to me. It sounds normal these days, and I don't mean I agree with him. I just mean think you know it's I, we've been hearing really? that shit for you a long you time. You don't think it sounded bad shit crazy? You don't think well, like the, not the turning I, chips I just, on and off and kids to track them is bad shit crazy? I didn't hear that part. Maybe I wasn't paying attention during that part. But oh, like yeah. the the rest of the stuff, like do you do you believe what you say in the news? It's like everything he just said, or at least what I heard is a typical complaint but it's like it's where they go with it you know what i mean like he's probably right they probably did cheaply edit the word i'm t words i'm terrified and put that on the news because they're cheap mainstream media fucked hearts right but like if they're gonna you know then he follows that up by saying something's going on here this ain't right and then it's ambiguous and then he doesn't have any ideas anymore do you know what i mean there's a lot of that like in a mile wide and an inch deep you know what I mean? Like, they, oh, they like you have... mean shallow? Is that what you're talking about? No, I don't mean shallow. I mean like they're they're emotional and not informed, and it's dangerous because they, they they he didn't sound like a person that I would hate. He just sounded like a guy who I think is a little misguided, and he's probably got a mental health issue or two. Like yes. that's really what I thought. Well, and let's I don't, finish the and rest. It's hard of it. for me to make fun of him. Like, he well, no, sound I'll, like I'll help you with that in a minute like, because you're fucking absolutely 100 percent wrong. Um, but I, anyway, let me play I you the hate last. Being minute wrong about that. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> let me play you the last minute thirty. So what I heard there, and we'll get into that. I'm going to get Locke's perspective. He's in radio. I may have had a spin in the business for a bit too. You uh, were, and we'll, were you we'll, on the radio a bit? Yeah, just for a few oh. years. Yeah, yeah. Made a little hay in the early 2000s. Yeah, a little bit. YouTube um, made me watch your award speech in 2012 at the Top Choice Awards, like that. Yeah, an hour ago. Yeah, you talked yeah. about Steve Anthony's bars, but go ahead. Yeah, I did a lot. So um, anyway, this is the last minute 30. I want you to listen very carefully for the grift and what his wife really wants out of this whole thing. This is fascinating. Stuff. But but they twisted it. 
make it seem like he was, you know, terrified to be there in Ottawa. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what is happening? What is happening? So, you know, the choice is yours. You can learn about it or you can ignore it and focus on your own happiness. And, you know, that's totally okay because, you know, we all got to take care of our own mental health. But, but please don't get sucked into the bickering that holds you and others down. Spreads negativity. Works to make things worse. I don't know. It's frustrating, man. But I, I will come in here. I'll be silly. I'll give away cash. I'll talk about stupid stuff like, hey, do you like curly fries or thick cuts? Call now. <laughs> I will keep doing that. But, uh, you know, to be totally honest, I have a contract that's coming to a close. And, and radio doesn't have a history ah. of letting you say goodbye on your last day. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying goodbye, but, you know, in the event that I ever yeah, become, yeah. you know, not enough or I ever become too much. Um, you can I actually just hear the shovel. Tell you how great it's been to, to be here on Z953 and to have these conversations with you the odd time on the air. And, and I hope that we can continue that uh, somewhere else. Um, at some point, or or if uh, you know, subscribe to my new podcast for a few bucks a month. I've got oh. kids to feed, uh-huh. and? Um, a wife who likes to buy organic food, uh. um, and it would be nice to have my tribe um, be with me and help me. So, but I'm still here. I'm on the radio. Uh, no, he's not. He got fired immediately after that. So Kid Carson got fired from the job. Um, and I want Lachlan's perspective on this because let me just read you the tweet he sent me last night when he actually sent me the audio, which I was really appreciative of. Quote, Kid Carson's last break. Uh, Lachlan, as far as uh, radio, people in radio, what did you hear there? And what do you know? Well... Again, I, I the one thing that is going to happen with this is is people and I understand exactly where this is coming from and where it's where it stems from. People are going to hang the he was unfairly, you know, fired and and they're going to that's that's what is going to happen. And he's going to build on that and he'll probably build a bit of an audience for his podcast from that like, that he was unfairly treated. I will tell you this, and 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 I think that I think that uh, that uh, the dean will back this up. If and I've been doing this a long time, and I've seen people go, and I, I and I've seen um, I've seen some spectacular endings to some some big careers. The thing about Kid, and I don't know much about Kid Carson. This isn't my world. This is. This is, I mean, it's radio, but it's, he's in a very different genre. I've never worked with him. I know people who have, and I've heard the odd story like we all have. Uh, uh, Dean's right. It's a small, it's very insular uh, uh, group of people, but this was the straw. There was numerous things that led to the decision to, to, to let him go. And, and I have a theory, and I would bet my car on this, that he went to the bathroom and he saw the head of Stingray in the urinal next to him. Stingray is the parent company of that radio station. Buddy. And he went, hmm, why would Steve be here? <laughs> Steve Jones is the uh, acting uh, program director for the yeah. entire network. Yeah. So uh... my guess is he walked, zipped his pants up, and this is 100% speculation, went back did that break that's not because a bad it, idea. it was a little disjointed yeah. it was a bit disjointed he's a great broadcaster obviously he's been doing a long long time but he he knew that 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 was his last day um there was a contract discussion and i know i know that he makes a lot of money and he's one of the last guys of that group that makes money um and i think there's also less ratings in the last couple of years for, for kid that support the money that he's making right now. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that I, I hear frustration in his voice in that break with where the, the negotiations were going. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think that no matter if he would have done that break or not, I think his, his time on that radio station was coming to an end. Regardless. And you can you can say that I you know I haven't got I've got haven't got a fucking clue. Um, I don't know that like I know some of the players involved, and no one's going to tell me anything. It's all speculation, but that's the sense that I get from it. And I, I love 
can I just share what you said to me last night, Dean? Yeah, totally. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> I have zero respect for him. If I would have known I was going out, I would have fucking blown the place up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I listened to the break and, and, and two things, right? I listened to it last night and, and a guy in Vancouver, it's on the morning radio there. You know him, Locke. Uh, he sent me the actual, uh, uh, like the Daily Hive article on it. He's like, can you believe this shit? This guy just blew up his entire life, like his whole life. And I'm like, tell me more. So here are some of the details. Locke is 100% correct. Uh, contract time was up. Uh, ratings are down. He's 50. He's working he's a at a kid's radio station. He's a problem. They want to. Yeah, he's the problem. And this is like there's like a million not in the demographic. That's another problem. Uh, six months ago, he fell prostate on prostrate or whatever the word is. Prostrate. Prostrate. prostrate, prostrate on it uh, uh, for 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 having like a restaurant, like an anti-vax restaurant tour on his show. That's what he was referring to, and they're like, "You can't do that because we're trying to get through the pandemic. It's highly irresponsible." And he felt bottled. Now, when you're on the radio and you're 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 humming and you're doing breaks and you you know everything's good, you can't have that shit on your mind. You can't. No. You can't have losing your job on your mind. You can't have comments. You can't have stepping out of mind on your line. Over time. That creates this fucking thing right in the front of your brain. It's called poison brain, I used to call it, where the things that you, yeah. that you want to come out of your mouth can't because you're thinking of this fucking heavy shit right in the front of your head. So there's and it a impedes nine, everything. It everything. impedes creativity. It, it just yeah. it fucking sucks the life out of you. And so there's a guy, and let me just go through Kid Carson's history. He has made a boatload of money, right? Oh, Millions. Yeah. And he has not wanted for anything. He has probably never really failed in his life. He's probably accrued this incredible sense of entitlement. Couple that with the fact that he started the this podcast industry business thing in, in Vancouver. He put millions into it and it went tits up prior to the actual uh, pandemic. So he lost a bunch of money. He's losing his job. He's losing, right? A guy that entitled, and I can tell you this because I've been there, As the second uh, you start feeling out of control because your life is spinning out of control, you can't control who employs you, you can't control where your next paycheck's coming from, all that other stuff, you snap. He snapped. Did you listen to him giggling? And I don't know which one of you guys said it, but you're like two foot in, two feet out, one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. That was like, I can't talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. And then he'd start laughing uncontrollably. That's a guy that is in major, major, major mental distress. Yeah. And, and I just want to bring that this was up. His last break. And that's why Dude. I think that, that lends credibility to what Locke's theory is, I think, for sure. He knew, he but he just didn't can. know for sure. Yeah, but he just didn't want it. It's, su it's such a good theory. I don't buy any it's conspiracy good, theory, it, but that's a great it implies theory. It implies good instincts. It implies, yeah. like, he, you know what I mean? Because, I don't know. Locke's I know you were before. just I know you were just pontificating, uh. Lachlan, but, like, it's really believable to walk into the bathroom and go, oh, the guy that fires guys, zip. And then just fucking like blows up wait. his ship. That's it. That's awesome. I, I listen. That's a, I listen. That's a gangster move, man. I listen to Locke's show every morning. I can't wait for the day he pees next to his programming director. Yeah, yeah, me too. That day's gonna be the HR epic. guy comes to town. <laughs> wait, what? 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 So this is You're... this is Kid Carson's Twitter uh, bio. This is him. Uh, no longer the morning show host. Is at ninety five three? Yeah, crypto. Imagine that. Crypto. Eyes open. He thinks he's the only smart guy on the planet. All of these people do. They think they've been given some special like conduit to Jesus Christ or conduit to Q or conduit. And what I heard there was to Lachlan's point, a guy who was scared, a guy who was manic and a guy who was a fucking coward that blew up his entire life, destroyed his children's reputations, his wife's reputation. And then he inserted what he really wanted out of that at the end. My wife likes to eat organic. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't even quit properly, dude. Like, if that's me, I am fucking lighting the place on fire, taking a dump, wiping my ass with the call sheet, and walking out. That guy pushed the whole fucking thing. I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I want to talk about it, but I'm not supposed to talk about it. You guys are going to think I'm crazy. No, no, no. You just go in there, and you let him fucking have it, and you turn off the mic, and you hit the next event, and you walk out. That's what he didn't do. So I've got no respect for him as uh, a critical thinker. I've got no respect for him as a radio person. I've got no respect for him as someone who legitimately abused the privilege he was given in those four hours. And I've got even less respect for him for what he did to his family and even less respect for him for how he quit like such a baby. I, baby. I, have a, I had an interesting conversation with somebody that uh, will go unnamed about um, what they would do. And and um, the thing is, James is right. Like, just 
j- let's just take that break. Take all of the other shit out of it. And, and I know, I, I know I am right. And you can say, Locke, you're full of shit. There are a list of things that led to his dismissal yesterday. It was not that break. It wasn't anything that he said in that break. That was just, that was it. That was the, yeah, we can't do this anymore. Um, and and that's that was what the decision was. And there was an amicable sit down. Um, and he was probably walked to his car, right. With a, with a, you know, a banker's box of the shit that he had at the radio station. Uh, Listen, if, if you could remove all the problems that kid Carson brought to the table over the last, whatever number of years it was that led to this sort of demise and remove that, put him on the radio with somebody that disagrees with him. You're fucked. That's ratings fucking gold. That oh, yeah. was what I was listening to when I was listening to that break. I was like, fuck it. You know, listen, I wouldn't want to be at a bebop station, but if I was <laughs> to be put in that room with him, I could make something out of that. Yeah. Like I could work with that. And and it's yeah, unfortunate that a lot of people can't really work with kid. I, I mean, I've heard that that's, that's one of the things that follows him around. And, and if he hears this, and, and is mad at that. That's that's on him. I have heard that he's not an easy guy to work with. But if he, if if you could find a dynamic where you put somebody in a room right now with what we're dealing with, that would be fucking radio gold in Vancouver. You got an anti-vaxer that wears the same muscle shirt every day. He's probably got twenty right? of them in his closet at home. And you put another Perfect. fucking asshole like me in there that goes up against him, or Dean, for instance. That oh would my be god, fucking amazing. Oh my god. Dean and he'd Ken, be like. Hannity and Combs, remember? It was like Hannity was like the smart aleck, quick witted guy, and Combs was like, Please don't hurt me. I'm a liberal. <laughs> well, that's wait, all I was just, that's just, all I was listening just to yesterday wait. was hold on, miss opportunity. opportunity. You heard opportunity oh in that. God. I did yeah. too. And then I and yeah. I heard him quit and I'm like, I oh, even fucked that up. Sorry, Ryan, what were you gonna say? I was just as uh, you could tell what he wanted at the end because he made it quite evident about podcasts and and, and he's doing the Joe he's smelling Joe Rogan's farts because Joe like what we're seeing happening with Joe Rogan in the in the news right now. He's smelling that and going, hmm. I'd like to eat that Joe Rogan. Yeah, it might ass. be the new. I might be Canada's new Rogan. Canada's that's, Joe that's Rogan. Everyone, every like left wing or right wing crazy radio bastard. Like, there's a chick that quit the Calgary the other day. Rogan is not right wing. Whatever. Listen, if right, if, like, but the, every every single one of these ass wipes is like, I'm gonna be the next Rogan. Does I don't think he has any idea. Like when guys like that go, I'm just moving to podcast. He, oh, come on not, in. He's not even the first. Uh, he's not even the first kid. Let me, yeah. You know? Let me finish. Let me finish this really quick, though, and I'll, 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 I'll walk, I'll walk you through what I'm thinking here. Okay, where is Rogan right now? I don't know. Spotify, In right? Yes. Oh, sorry. Spotify. Lost. Yeah. Where did, where did the Rogan gym. just get an offer from? Rumble. Where that is was, Rumble uh, from? Canada. Vancouver. I didn't know Scotland. that. Until. Where is oh. kid, kid? Whatever the fuck his name, kid. What is it, Carson? Chris? Carson. 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 Yeah. Carson. Kid. Kid Carson. That, He's from Canada Rumble too. Thing, no, d- Rumbles. Uh, Joe Rogan's not going anywhere. He's not going to take the offer. No. Yeah. Yeah. And now, kid Carson smells that and knows that too. And if and he's hey, out of a job, and well, he sees an opportunity. He says, "Well, you know what? Mm. If Rogan, they weren't Rogan's not going to take it. I'll take it for half the money or a quarter of the money or whatever." Rhino. Right? So, Rhino. Rhino. I got to tell you something. Yeah. I, I didn't. Been I didn't a hear. I didn't hear a lot of forethought in that break. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Man. thinking how I would think if I was a fucking idiot. Well, like you're him. smart. No, you're smart. <laughs> you don't yeah. think that he could get a job sports. on Rumble? R- I think he Ryan, could. I, I, oh, yeah. Ryan, I don't think you're wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I bet you're right. I bet you he does go over to Rumble, but uh, I don't think it. Rumble has money. I think Rumble had something. You think really, that, was really a, smart that was a po- in a posture? room that said, yeah, let's 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 throw let's offer um, Joe Rogan a hundred million dollars to come up here. And people are going to talk about it. Rogan's not going to come to Canada and broadcast on Rumble, um, right? Yeah, um, they would just have to pay him like a hundred grand or something. They, 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 they don't have a hundred million. Oh yeah, he did, dude. Uh, my my understanding is Kid Carson has lost his shirt over the past couple of years. So yeah, he'd probably take a hundred grand. Probably do all kinds of stuff for like fifty. Be down you at the truck rally giving out those uh, yeah. complimentary blowjobs. So. Complimentary beegers. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking for some money. There's some guy at the Coventry parking lot in Ottawa looking for a rubdown. 
handing out that give send go money to the working girls. You can cop it on that. I hate I hate the fact that he looks like me, but like forty eight percent more douchier with like a tan. You know? Oh, don't worry, you look really a couple of tattoos. Yeah. You need a neck tattoo, James. Yeah, you do. (laughs) Like side like a or a face one like uh, Tyson. Right here right, on the right, side. Right there. Right there. Yeah, he, he needs a Tyson. <laughs> you Stop need it. a face tattoo. <laughs> you have no, a I, I, you, you know, even just the pictures. Like, oh, he's got that stupid crypto eyes thing yeah, going, Yeah, crypto too. eyes. Dude, clear eyes, what? great prize, or whatever What's the crypto fuck is. eyes? Yeah. Why is he doing that with his hands? There is something wrong with him. That's, uh, that's because like that. he's a fucking weirdo. No, oh, I'm, like I'm not going to call him out that. on pictures, man. When you when you when you go yeah, when yeah. you sit in a photo shoot, they try to get you to do different shit. Yeah. And every time, every single time, I say, I I, I say I'm not going to do this, and then you get talked into it, and then the, the picture <laughs> of you jumping off the park bench is the one they use with your hands up right. like this. Yeah, yeah, but you have an art director that hates you, Lachlan. So well, that's the other thing too. We have a promotions department that despises me. So every time, like I, I they showed me the artwork for our new campaign for the uh, for the spring, and uh, and as soon as they showed it, Grant and Jimmy started laughing because they make me look handicapped every time. And Maybe I, it's not them. I went into the boss's <laughs> office. <laughs> I went into well the done. boss's office well and done. he goes, what do you think well of done. the new campaign? And I went, why don't we just go jump full in, put a helmet and a chin strap on me. Wow. To Ryan's point. Yeah. Have, have me eating pudding too. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Let's just do full blown. You guys food. are a step away from it. L- Lachlan, you got to sign autographs. Grab the primary pencil. Okay. Yeah. You're good. Let's and... rename the show to the simple Jack radio program. <laughs> I mean, I am not the best. I'm not the easiest photographer. Like, yeah, I, no, I, like I'm not. Photo, I get it. The romper room. I understand room it. With but Lachlan there Cross. are a couple of good pictures of me. Let's yeah. use those. No, nope. it's like ah! here's that the picture good, of me. The good news is, is uh, that because they do that again, I gotta show you that. guys. I'm the one that clips the show. Can you do that again? I gotta yeah. show you guys the picture that they picked. <laughs> oh, we like number three, and I'm like, go what? get it. That's do you have it now? One. You're not seeing the upside. There's an upside, Lachlan. Now, if you wanted to, if you got really mad at management, you could just drop and start masturbating, right? Like, you could do that. <laughs> now you... That's right. Say it, Kid right? Carson gets fired because oh, yeah. he thinks they're chipping kids. What did Locke get fired for? <laughs> ah, whacking off in the sales pit. But isn't he handicapped? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, I'm opening well, look up at these this, pictures. And yeah, I'll, I want to send, see I'll send it to you quickly. That's so uh, I want to see this picture of Can you, you put... uh, that you hate so much. I really yeah. do because I'm I'm the same. I'm like you. Uh, I don't have like I'm not afraid of anything, but I'm not a big fan of someone taking my picture, and I don't. Know oh, why. I hate I've it. I hate the, fo- the photo shoots. Is like the most painful thing I've ever been through in radio, and they just what? hate me too. By the end of it, just put it in the Twitter chat, and Ricky, will, uh, Ricky, Ricky will grab it. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, hey Ricky. So, Ricky. Yeah, if anybody if anybody was around um, when Dean was on the radio and you would see a promo of Dean, you didn't see Dean's face very often, but when you did, you could tell he didn't like that picture that no, was taken of him. No. You could tell he's just like, get this fucking over with. Every picture okay. was that, get I'm this over the, with I'm face. I'm putting a picture. Yeah, they're going to love like ben, hearing like this. that Ben Affleck picture with the cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty much it. <laughs> you can hear a Krusty the Clown grunt escape from his esophagus. It'd be great. Yeah. All right, I'm did just going to put... Put this in the yeah, and then we'll get you. Can you we'll put the Kid Carson one up really quick? I just want to check it um, to see if there's any. You're not going to make fun of an unemployed crazy person, are you? <laughs> no, I just want to okay. see. Okay, I was just looking for the actual barbed wire tattoo. That's so got to no, be. Why are his eyes like right? that? He likes Twilight. What, what's no, the he likes reason? crypto. He like that's like a that's code that a for thing? all. Well, it's crypto, but it's also like mega. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's like. Because I don't know if you listen to the break we the just The real lies, the real lies, <laughs> and you realize the lies of the real lies and the lies. Yeah. Like, that's Dude, a Pinterest thing. That's I can, all that I, was. Yeah, it's a 14-year-old crying girl thing. All I know thing. about him is that guy is not well-read, and he saw a bumper sticker or read it somewhere on Facebook, memorized it, brought it on the air with him to sound smart. Thought it was prolific. Thought it was. Thought people would go, <laughs> fuck, that's Aristotle right there. That's what the that eye, is. That guy is like Epictetus the, and Seneca rolled into one. He's so bright. What a philosopher. He's, he's totally he just stopped fucking thing on. He's yeah, he probably put it on a sticky note and went, don't forget to nail this because people think yeah. you're smart. Yeah. Yeah. I, of and course, he's of course, putting this I, I, I got to go to Kmart. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't forget to get milk. And he and spelled realize, realize, realize wrong on that sticky note. He spelled the realize gonna, wrong. You guys are going to lose your minds when you see it. Takes realize. I just put it realize. in the DM. All right. Ricky. Ricky, right. get it. That only it, took Ricky. eight minutes. I'm Way sorry, to go, I was trying Rockland. to send a PDF and it wouldn't send, so I had to take a You picture. look like an idiot. <laughs> We're dying out here, Ricky. <laughs> we watched it in real time. Lachlan's technical ability, everybody. Did you notice oh that? I'm looking All at it right he... now. You look like such a fucking idiot. It is All he was asked to do was to send that a picture. That was their number one and that's choice. That's what it took. There's like 10 of them, and they picked that one. The worst one, by the way. I'm always like, oh, my God. Why? Just put a helmet. Just to put a big blue helmet on me right now. Oh, Dude, you look. You, you legitimately look like an idiot. It's like they've got two guys behind you. are like, make Locke look as – you're right. They want to make you look like an idiot. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Is it lunchtime? To uh, Dean Blundell Show on YouTube, Dean Blundell TV on uh, Twitch. You can see all this live. Instead of just listening to it on Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your audio podcast. Uh, and in the entire network of podcasts at DeanBlundell.com, too. Uh, there's a bunch. hundred. It's awesome. Got a little bit of everything. You'll love it. I love it. Uh, thanks to our friends and sponsors at ED Auto Financial. Easy Auto Financial help you get you in a car. Uh, if you have a pro- tough time with credit, don't worry about it. These guys are credit masters. Uh, and they make everything super easy and turnkey as well. If these are good people, they'll help you get a car, help you get financing, and they won't charge you a dime for it. It's turnkey, easyautofinancial.ca. Uh, domination. Great people out of New York. They've invented some uh, artificial intelligence that takes one file of content, turns it into up to 70 pieces, five minutes. You don't have to waste any time editing, none of that stuff. It does it all for you, self-contained. It'll save you hours. If you're a gamer, streamer, podcaster, you have a problem with promos and stuff like that, it takes you too much time, you're on your own. Try Domination today, dmntn.com. Again, dmntn.com. Uh, and last but not least, Ed's Fine Imports. His gets are on our body. They should be on yours as well. Luxury branded underwear, boxer briefs that uh, fit on your body. They got the pouch in the front and they're Canadian made. And I'd really like it if you supported my friend Ed and his luxury branded underwear uh, at edsfineimports.com. And uh, he'll reward you by sending you the best underwear you'll ever buy. Without question. Best underwear. I've been through them all. Gitch. Sacks. Uh, I've been through two under. I've been through all of them. Haynes. Gitch is your underwear. Edsfineimports.com. Whew. Woo, Lordy. Uh, We'll be back tomorrow. Karen Bliss will be joining us tomorrow, as well as Marianne Iveson and Kareem Asad as we finish up our week in Ottawa. And appreciate everybody being here. Really appreciate it. It was a good show today. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we do stuff, right? Everybody does stuff. We did some stuff today. We had a bunch of people enjoy it. Home. I'm gonna eat a stir fry. Actually, I am home. I'm gonna go eat a stir fry and finish making it, and then eat it. Actually, it's probably the best thing to do. Otherwise, it'd just be a stir, no fry. Bye. Uh-huh.